Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. An American spirit He asks how I can smoke such shit I say there's nothing like chain smoking GPC cigarettes Cause any smokes will kill ya But these will make you feel like it I sit back down on the parking lot curb And remember back to February the trip to Hartford When five minutes ago He was passed out on the staircase Trying to walk to his apartment But not making it all the way And now he's driving us 100 miles an hour Down the interstate Another beer in his hand Swearing we won't be late That was before everyone moved To New Mexico they all left a couple of months ago Until the day, my friend When I sleep on the floor of your van again I'll be waiting in this parking lot And in my dreams I am dirty, broke, beautiful and my hand clenching a fist and my face in a smile After hitching too many miles Revolutionaries But we are the revolution And sometimes I think that the whole movement is just me and you And that maybe we'd all be better off If that were true Cause then at least we know where we stand And we can tell our comrades apart from the man but if the world is in that temple, maybe this town is at least. And if I'm not marching with them to war, I'm sure not marching with you for peace. Class traitor. What fucking ever? I'm just another middle class kid too. But if I'm not good at changing, I'm good at self-loathing. So all class hate myself with you May our only occupation be not having a job May the only cocktails that we make be Molotov May that day be now And for as many days after that as we know how it starts in this parking lot And in my dreams I am dirty, broke, beautiful and free My hands clutching a fist And my face in a smile After hitching too many miles like the feeling when you had a point but forgot it had a ticket for my train of thought but I lost it 
God gave me instructions on how to live my life. But I couldn't read his handwriting, so I burnt them last night. But I take the beauty of chaos over ugly perfection. I've woken up on the wrong side of the bed every day since 1987. I can feel myself slipping away from any chance of redemption. But that's okay, cause if it's where Falwell goes, then I don't even want any part of heaven. A guy on TV offered to save my soul toll free. But that would have required getting up off the couch, so I was too lazy. Instead, I wait in the bushes outside of a cop's house, holding a 12 gauge. God is it dead, but I'll get that bastard someday. And I take the beauty of my chaos over anyone else's perfection. I've still woken up on the wrong side of the bed every day since 1987. Nothing scares me as much as the fact that I don't give a shit for redemption. But that's okay, cause if it's where Limbaugh goes, then I don't even want any part of heaven. Hell Satan! One, two, three, one, two, three. I was a loner until there were no friends left. And before someone offered me drugs, you know, I was straight edge. And everyone's quit till you offer them a cigarette. Before we learn our lesson, let's see how bad things can get. I'll drink myself to death, or at least I'll drink myself to sleep. Chain smoke my way through the gaps in between my aspirations and my apathy. As we drive past the last exit to home, I am waving goodbye and I might be sleeping in the ditch tonight, but it's all right, cause whiskey is my kind of lullaby. I was sober all morning Till I woke up this afternoon And before someone offered me a job You know I was gonna get one soon And everyone in this town sleeps Till the calendar collides with June before the booze wears off, let's take another shot or two. And I'll drink myself to death, or at least I'll drink myself to sleep. Chain smoke my way through the gaps in between my aspirations and my apathy as we drive past. The last exit to home, I am waving goodbye And I might be sleeping in the ditch tonight But it's alright, cause 
whiskey is my kind of lullaby. Lullaby. One, two, three, four. Well, if I found God anywhere, it would be by the tracks. Face down in a boxcar, 40 in both hands. When I find God there, we'll just sit and roll some top. Cause no big just as confused as any one else on this rock. I took two taps of acid yesterday afternoon. Woke up this morning with a torn pair of shoes. Found I'd ruined my life and everyone else's too. I guess this is what my teachers warned me drugs would do. But they forgot to mention the way the morphine makes the pain go away. And how I'll always remember the good times in my spine and the holes I burn in my brain with this next line. If I found Satan anywhere, it would be by the tracks Trading souls of kids like me for cheap bags of snack When I find Satan there, you know I won't be thinking twice At least in hell, there's rock and roll, it ain't no Jesus Christ I swear I left my sanity someplace in this mess Crumpled between empty beers and packs of cigarettes Kick my last note to pieces and then just hope for the best I guess this is why my friends warn me against hopelessness But they're the ones getting laid And I'm the one waking up lonely every single day And I'll remember that as I listen to their crap Tell them to fuck off, then hug them after that Well, if I found God anywhere, it would be by the tracks Huffing whippets down as he watches the trains pass When I find God there, I'll watch him pass out throwing up Cause he's drank himself to sleep every night Since the one that he made us What's up, y'all? Uh, mm, I could use some more sleep. <laughs> I could use some more sleep. Uh, so, some interesting headlines come out. McConnell saying that uh, a national abortion ban is possible. The Arizona uh, GOP senator, senatorial candidate, I forget their fucking name. Uh, calling for a uh, a countrywide uh, condom ban, and then um, Blackburn, Marsha, 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 Marsha. Uh, fuck, there's a reference most of you fuckers don't get. Um, Blackburn, um, also a senator, proposed a plan where uh, birth control would only be legal for married couples, hence this the stream title. So we have actual senators now proposing nationwide bans on contraception because it was just about abortion, right? It was just about saving um, saving the baby's lives. Um, which question, by the way, I, I have a question. Um, if it is, if, if the fetus is um a baby a baby we're we're saving babies out here everyone we gotta save the babies if we're saving babies i got a few questions if that's a legitimate person don't we need to reorder some of our regulations and financial stuff i'm just i'm just saying like i mean look if somebody's at work 
and there's somebody there and they're unpaid, that's illegal, right? Like that's unpaid labor. So if that's a person and that person is at the job place and they're doing tasks, because remember, there's apparently no difference between the um, mother and the, the child at that point, um, as far as they're concerned. Um, also, health insurance and um, life insurance. Can At 12 weeks, can I take a life insurance policy out on a fetus? I mean, a baby. A baby. It's just a little baby. Can I can I take a can I take a life insurance policy out on a twelve week baby? And yes, I'll be doing that a lot. Um, yeah. There's there's you know also um when does child support start? Seeing as it is a child, and there are fees and costs associated with pregnancy. Um, do, why do we wait until, Hey, they, I was just getting there, Rev. Um, why do we wait until after birth to assign a social security number as well? Shouldn't we get that ball rolling ahead of time? Seeing as it is a baby, right? Like I, I just, some questions about the logistics of calling a fucking 12 week cluster of cells up a person. Uh, I, yeah, non I talked about that last week. I told everybody to fucking watch your GPS tracking data. I was ahead of it. I was ahead of it by a fucking week. Yeah, I saw, I saw those articles going around. No, I talked about the company who sells the data. I fucking name checked them. I don't remember their name anymore. But yeah. Yeah, like that's. And fetuses are dependents. Yeah, what about um, what about um, um, tax implications of that? When can I write my baby off? When is when is it appropriate to begin writing off your baby? <laughs> for expenses. Uh, yeah, period trackers as well, I suppose. Mm, mm, yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay, I've already, I already asked, like, when does child support start? Seeing as there are costs and expenses associated with pregnancy, when does that start? Just out of curiosity. Well, it's not all about that public, um, but that's a hefty component. Yeah, don't don't let yourself be boxed into a bad uh, to a bad argumentation place just because you use a term like all. But I hear you, man. I hear you. Um, it's it's as I said, a hefty component or a, a large percentage of. Um, it's it's most assuredly a factor. Um, but. Yeah. Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. Every sperm is wasted. God gets quite irate. If a sperm is wasted, God get quite, it gets quite irate. Um, oh, the, there's a bunch of benefits for those that are horrible, horrible people. Um, but yeah. I, again, fucking... This is only a component of it. There's there's more than one group at work here. There's more than just the evangelicals. There's just mo there's more than just the capital class. There's more than just you know the the prison industrial class uh, group. You know there's this is this is the problem. This is this is the problem with having to make nuanced arguments against idiot people not not these people but you know that's the the problem with having to make a nuanced argument against idiot people is is you know baby killer versus you know a discussion of socioeconomic ramifications and the prison military industrial complex and blah 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 so it's about a lot of shit but at the end of the day, it's an authoritarian power grab. So fuck you. Uh, so you guys want to hear? Um, <clears throat> no, actually, it's um, cold brew green tea. Um, AJ, I don't know. It's it's fucking barely started, man. Um, don't know yet. I mean, I don't think babies are cute no matter what, Wilhelm. They're screaming little nightmare things, as far as I'm concerned. 
Um, yeah, Beast, Beast is just sort of like talk, it did ticking them off, right? The disarming of society, the furthering of the lower class, the Epstein supply, the vote count for the next generation. Fucking, there's a whole bunch of, see, Glazy's all for abortion. Glazy's, Glazy's fucking squish him under my boot. See, Glaz, Glazy's down. You think, you think Gla, Glazy is pro pro choice, but Glazy's apparently like some post post birth fucking abortion territory as well. I'll send them your, your way when they start talking about post abortion, uh, post birth abortion. Um, what in the fuck? <laughs> hmm. Um, see, yep. Yeah, see, even Glazy's like, no, 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 don't want these fucking things on the planet. They're fucking bugs. <laughs> see, Glazy's a bro. <sighs> like kids, but they got to be at the point where they look like it look human, like two or three. I need them. I need them to be able to like have a conversation and not just one that's like you know, crazy, crazy town conversation. Um. Patronum, you're in Alabama. Interesting. Yeah, Alabama's um, fucking gender nonsense went into, like, can't get gender-affirming care fucking in Alabama, basically. Um, which, well, you can't get gender-affirming care if you're, like, trans or, like, you know, you can get it if you're a cisgendered heterosexual because cisgendered heterosexuals get gender-affirming care all the time in our society. Fucking, that is, that's, that's normal. Um, <laughs> public. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> I want to read you a story. It's a short one. Um, it's been reposted on Reddit, but it was. Um, most assuredly, um, <clears throat> well, you'll, you'll see, you'll see quote. I'm a very conservative person. I don't believe you should be able to get an abortion without justified reasons. My whole side changed after my now wife was raped about four months ago. We tested and tested to make sure she wasn't pregnant. But after two and a half months, we found out she was, she was still having her periods and hardly gaining any weight. We couldn't afford another child after just having one last September. When we went to Planned Parenthood, it was the worst experience of our lives. We had people screaming at us, telling us so much stuff. Well, my wife is now in the hospital for self-harm. She was the happiest person ever before any of this happened. We couldn't, we really couldn't afford another child. All I ask is that you open your eyes to some women who don't find out till later as long as it affects their health or came from rape or any other reason that affects them bodily or emotionally. But our families, both conservative, have dropped us after learning about her abortion. My whole world has been turned upside down. Friends and family calling us killers. She was raped and she didn't want to go through with it. And I will always stand behind that, even if it means I have to vote against the majority of my beliefs and make sure it doesn't happen to others. My life is forever changed. I'm still conservative, but majority of you make me want to vomit. It was posted in r slash conservative. Um, let's just say it didn't um, fare well. Um, yes, um, it got reposted under Leopards Eating Faces Party, of course, or the Leopards Ate My Face, um, for sure. But I just thought you guys would. Uh, <clears throat> yes. It's it's the Dick Cheney LGBT syndrome. Only when it happens to them. Exactly, AJ. Only when it happens to them can they un understand it. Because they, they have no empathy whatsoever. Conservatives have no empathy. Again, <clears throat> see my discussion of circles of empathy and depths of empathy for for the for, uh, the more nuanced conversation around that. It's not that they, well, some of them legitimately don't feel empathy. Um, but it's their circle of empathy is so contracted that they are incapable of an empathetic response to somebody outside their immediate circle. So in the case of like Dick Cheney, he completely didn't give a shit about it and sort of hated fucking gay people until his daughter was like, <clears throat> hey dad. And then all of a sudden Cheney's pro LGBT. I mean, he's not going to be marching. He wasn't going to be marching any parades, but he's, he got off our fucking dicks about it. 
So, yeah. Yeah, it's only when it affects them. Um, so, yes, Nancy Reagan with stem cells. It, take your pick. Take your pick. Um, yes, social conservatives are terrible people. They are. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, cricks. There is, there is the, um, there's the amygdala of a base response. Um, so we do have, um, we do have a popos for tonight. Uh, we have, we have a popos bizarre adventures. Um, <clears throat> um, also, um, um, women not being able to vote isn't going to be coming next, but you're, you're not on the lo- wrong track, Lenny. Let's just put it that way. Hey, weather. Um, I remember one of the nurses I follow on Twitter talked about how she had a patient tell her she was going to hell for giving her the abortion she asked for. <laughs> oh, Marcus. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Uh, Cupio. It's n- not that easy. It's not that easy. We've just spent five decades basically fighting this fight and this fight started oh jesus christ when did the the actual roe v wade start uh fight start so let's just say we've been doing this for about seven decades oh jesus glazy good luck good luck god bless um yeah so, hey, there we go. Eastside Gyne- Gynecological has one. Uh, All right, so <laughs> of course it was, of course it was, oh, of course it was. Okay, so in 1873, uh, contraception and abortion was um, uh, deemed illegal in the U.S. by the Comstock laws. For those of you who don't know the Comstock laws, do the Comstock laws? Oh. Uh, d- d- basically made everything illegal uh obscenity contraceptives abortifactants uh sex toys um anything with any sexual content or information any uh anything that contained information on how to obtain like the previous things i've mentioned um it gave uh f- it would allow the federal jurisdiction uh federal uh, government jurisdiction over these things it was um the anti um fun anti-vice activist fun advice in my head uh the anti-vice activist um god what was comstock's first name either way um it was a person it was a person he was um he was a postal inspector um and so yeah like that's so the first time that uh, abortion was like properly controlled in this country um hey puka uh, com- it was the 1873 Comstock laws. So technically, we'd been fighting this. We, prior to that, there was apparently 20 states that had laws against abortion. But, um, Colorado. Okay, so Griswold, Connecticut, 65. So the fight probably would have started in 60. Um, let's see. When did, um, Yeah, okay. So to make it, yeah, we'll just estimate. So, yeah, about the last 80 years, we've been fighting this fight. Um, Way before Roe v. Wade. Um, Griswold v. Connecticut is 65. That's a woman's right to privacy. And then uh, 67 is when Colorado uh, relaxes its abortion laws. Um, and then 70 to 74 is when Alaska, Hawaii, New York, Washington, other states start to follow suit. Um, I 
then in 76, the Hyde Amendment passed, preventing funding of abortion through Medicaid, again, trying to oppress and control the least amongst us, the poverty stricken. Um, so uh, 73 would be Comstock, uh, Comstock laws. Uh, zippy. Yeah, 1873. Yeah. Yeah. And then it isn't until Griswold v. Connecticut that we start to, like, push back on that one. Um, so, yeah, this is this is a this is an 80 year fight. So why don't we just tell the uh, conservatives that, like, we'll be killing liberal babies or something like that? Oh, I can't imagine why that that won't work, because apparently you are very short sighted. Yes, uh, whether in fact Roe v. Wade has been the law of the land for 20% of this country's history. For one-fifth of this country's history, Roe v. Wade has been the deciding law of the land. Um, it's it's kind of old when you put it into a percentage. Fucking 20%. That's not a small chunk. That's, that's, that's significant. So, yeah. Twitter seems to be 404-ing for some users. Good job, Elon. Good job. <laughs> Crimson, I just saw your Mother's Day present. Good job, man. Uh... I think we start. I think we start making a new policy, Cupcake. Um, why do I shit on Elon so hard? Because he's literally the descendant of a benefit. He is literally the beneficiary of an apartheid state and slavery-driven gem mines, who has benefited directly from uh, government capitalist abuses and um, the deregula uh, deregulation of monopolization and antitrust laws within this nation. He's also highly anti-union. He's also a petulant child who likes to call people pedophiles when they disagree with him. He's insanely overly litigious. He has no problem with launching wars in third world countries just to get his hands on some lithium. He's fine with toppling sovereign, and, uh, sovereign de uh, democratically elected governments if that means he can get a lower bottom line on his uh, raw resources. He's also a narcissistic egomaniac who thinks that he creates things when in fact he employs people who create things. Every company he's ever touched actually hates him. Um, yes, the exact quote was, we'll coo who we want to. And also, he's not a free speech absolutist. He has openly blocked and banned people. So he's not a free speech absolutist. He regularly blocks and bans people. Um, he's also not a free speech absolutist at his own companies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, public. And there is a person in this community that um, absolutely has had firsthand multi-year working with him directly experience that you can speak to as to the personal nature of what Elon Musk is like as a human being. He's a terrible human being. He's horrible to work with. Most people hate him. Yes. Yeah, PayPal wouldn't be a thing if Musk was left in charge of it. Yeah, Thiel, Thiel made PayPal work. Uh, I think it should. If he's an absolutist rev, why not? I think it should count. If he is an at free speech absolutist, I think it should. Also, he fires people who say things he doesn't like. So much for that free speech absolutism. 
Um, oh, yeah, no, he's for real an IRL villain. Oh, interesting. What you got for me, Marcus? Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Okay, hang on. Oh my God. How many of these citations, Marcus, are like foundational citations? Like how many of these would go away? This is 100% linear. That's intense. All right, let me show you guys some shit. Freeing the 45th president from the shackles of censorship. Holy shit, Glazy. God, you're a fucking joke. Man, <laughs> fucking A. He's the 45th president. He can literally just call CNN and fucking say whatever the hell he wants, and they'll put him on the air for the most part. You could call in Fox News on any given day. Um, the shackles of censorship. He has like an official press team for fuck's sake. The shackles of censorship. Holy shit, man. Yeah, yeah, Trump was really shackled. Every time he said something stupid, we didn't hear it ad nauseum anyway, even after he was banned from Twitter. Also, Twitter's a pri uh, private company, whether you like it or not. He has his own site. Like, fucking Jesus Christ. Shackles of censorship. Uh, yeah, Wither, you can if you pay for it. And, uh, if you pay for it, yeah, you can get a press team. Fuck it. Shackles of censorship. Jesus goddamn Christ. You are a goddamn fucking comedian. All right, so let's look at these. Um, uh, Marcus, I don't think Marcus is in chat, actually. Um, I think Marcus just dropped this in the, oh, wait, 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 there's Marcus. There we go. Basically on the left side of the bottom, it says reported or published are all precedents in their jurisdictions. Uh, okay. Um, now let's see. Basically on the left side at the bottom, it says reported or published. are all precedents in their jurisdictions. Oh my God. Seriously, that many? Oh my God. Later, Funky. Okay, so here is what Marcus was posting in the Discord server. For those of you who don't remember, Marcus, Marcus B. Attorney. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Cupcake. I think the drive-bys should just catch a ban. <clears throat> I think the drive-bys should, should just catch a ban. Um, that's where I was going with that. I think if you are so bad faith that you come in, you drop some shit that is going to be the center of attention, and you fuck off, Immediately, like immediately, I think that should just be an auto ban. That's that's literally the definition of bad faith. That's just you're just looking to start shit. I I we the mods can discuss it. Uh, mods speak amongst yourselves. Community, you can talk about how you feel about it, but that's just my idea. I leave that to the mod staff to figure out amongst themselves how they feel about it. But that was the first thing that popped into my head. Um, okay, so what Marcus was saying was these are screenshots of how many cases cite Roe v. Wade and KCV uh, Planned Parenthood. Okay, so 
it's context for them for uh, 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 to, for them being overturned. So here is Planned Parenthood v. Casey. And remember what Marcus said up here when I asked that question, like how many how many things depend on this? Um, or like, you know, precedent. How many of them are foundational? Marcus said based uh, basically uh, on the left side at the bottom that says reported or published are precedents in their jurisdictions for it. So this is reported 144 for Planned Parenthood v. Casey, and then Roe v. Wade has 3684. So like Roe v. Wade and Casey v. Planned Parenthood or Planned Parenthood v. Casey are foundational to like 5,000 cases. Their precedent in 5,000 cases. I don't even know. I, I don't even know the ramifications of that. I mean, Marcus would have to go into that for us. Um. Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> Public. Public. I don't go quietly into the good night. Oh. So, maybe you'll see someone else there. Um Oh yeah. Yeah, the Federalist Society. <laughs> oh, the Federalist Society. <sighs> fucking these sketchy-ass fucking libertarian conservative douchebags that have successfully taken over the legal profession by all accounts. 200, like more than 200 chapters in law schools and stuff like that. Dude, yeah, they're the, the Federalist uh, Society is absolutely... Um, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, oh, I mean, I don't even. I don't even want to tell you. I mean, six of the nine justices are Federalist Society members, and they're all the ones you you assume: Thomas, fucking Alito, fucking Barrett, Kavanaugh, Gorsuch. Um, Roberts, Roberts, Roberts is the other one. Um, so yeah, they it was founded based back in um, eighty two by a bunch of um, Harvard, Yale, and University of Chicago. I want to say it was it's Harvard, Yale, and I want to say University of Chicago law graduates um, who basically are anti liberal, anti leftist. That's, that's, that's the sort of like, that is the basis of uh, the Federalist Society is we are against anything therefore. Only they're all lawyers. They're all lawyers. That's, that's sort of the deal. So these are the people that can literally manipulate that system. Um, yeah. Oh... I mean, Marcus, if anybody has any questions for Marcus, what the ramifications of this is, just ask him in chat, I think, at this point. Um, as a side note, the Senate voted to... Um, <clears throat> I have vote counts, too, by the way. Um, the Senate voted 78-17 for giving a $10 billion bailout to Jeff Bezos. They voted 90 to 5 
for a $125 billion corporate tax break. They voted 87 to 6 for a $53 billion break to corporate outsourcers. They voted 88 to 11 for $780 billion to go to war profiteers in the military industrial complex. And they voted 58 42 against a $15 minimum wage. So we handed 10 billion to Jeff Bezos for free. We gave 125 billion for corporate tax break structures, 53 billion to outsourcing, 780 billion to the military industrial complex and nothing for minimum wage. Oh good, I was worried if Bezos was going to be able to eat. Um so Yeah. That's, that's what was on the agenda for the Senate. That's what they accomplished today. What'd you do? And did you uh, rape and pillage a, like, you know, a foreign country? <laughs> Cause that's what they're getting up to. Ah. Uh. Paid overwhelming amount for gas. Uh, free market, baby, says nonsense. Yeah, exactly. That's 100% what that is. That's the free market at work. Uh, that's the invisible hand, I think, that they're talking about. Um, oh, wither, I mean, fucking... At not in that round, but... Um, let's see... A lot, actually, a lot. Um, March of this year, uh, Congress passed a hundred and thirty-four point four million, twenty-one percent increase to their own allowances, the largest since it was authorized in nineteen ninety-six, according to the House Appropriations Committee. So there's the answer. Whether um, back in March they got a twenty-one percent increase. Thank you, non-binary. Um, I get my contract stuff tomorrow at 11 a.m. I'll post something in Discord. All right, duly noted, got punk. I look forward to seeing it. Um, yes. Yeah, they got a, they got a 21% raise. Oh. <laughs> and the largest they've ever done, too. And they've done some biggies. Uh, I, you know, oh, I wanted to add that, um, I'm not, oh, Jesus, let me add this to the list, <laughs> oh, all right, cool, um, And then I need to put it on the tab. There we go. And there we go. Cool. Thank you. Um, here is a just an interesting study. Um, there we go. It was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, I'll get you the uh, actual study link when fucking the Journal of American Clinical Nutrition actually loads. It's not... They're not one of the larger journals. Let's just put it that way. Um, all right. There we go. There we go. All right. There's the link to it. So what they found, what they wanted to look at was the effects of a Mediterranean diet on the symptoms of depression in young males. So depression... Uh, clinical depression is apparently a common health condition. It affects one in eight males each year, especially uh, a disproportionate amount of young males. Um, young adulthood uh, allows for what they refer to as an opportunity for early dietary intervention. 
Um, so they wanted their their objective was to determine whether a Mediterranean diet can improve depression symptoms in young males with clinical depression. Twelve week parallel group open label randomized control trial conducted to assess the effects of a Mediterranean diet um, in the treatment of moderate to severe depression in young males ages 18 to 25. Um, befriending therapy was chosen for one, uh, for the control group assessments taken at baseline week six and week 12 Mediterranean diet adherence was measured with an adherence score. It's called the Metis. Um, the primary outcome measurement was the Beck depression inventory scale or the BDI two secondary outcome was quality of life. Uh, results. It's got an N of 72. So not the world's largest study, but still statistically relevant. Um, a total of 72 participants completed the study. After 12, uh, 12 weeks, the meta scores were significantly higher in the Mediterranean diet group compared to the befriending group. The mean difference was 7.8. Uh, 7 uh, 7 so the mean change in BDI2 score was significantly higher in the MD group compared to the befriending group. Mean difference of 14.4. Um, quality of life score was also significantly higher in the MD group compared to the befriending group. Mean difference 12.7. So here's their conclusion. Our results demonstrate that compared to befriending, a, a Mediterranean diet intervention leads to significant increases in the Meta score, decreases in the BD2 score, and increases in quality of life scores. The results highlight the important of role of nutrition in the treatment of depression and should inform advice given by clinicians to this specific demographic population. So what, what's our takeaway from that? Our takeaway from that is that a diet of greens, lean protein, healthful fats, and slow digested, low gly uh, glycemic index carbohydrates actually aids in the treatment of and mediation of moderate to severe clinical depression in young 18 to 25 year old males. So that sad, the standard American diet that you have is actually partly responsible for your depression. Not wholly, but partly. Yes. Eat better and you will feel better to some extent. Eat a cheeseburger, feel like offing yourself. Eat some grilled salmon and you feel like surviving where did my god damn it youtube I swear to god oh my god jesus there we go um <clears throat> What is a Mediterranean? Pretty much what I just described. It uh, the Mediterranean. You can look it up, but it is a diet rich in wild, dark wild greens, plenty of fruits, plenty of vegetables, grains, um, beans, nuts, seeds, olive oil as your primary fat source. So a healthful, uh, 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 healthful uh, oil or a healthful fat source, um, and then fish and poultry in low to moderate amounts. Um, you very low red meat. Um, as well in the Mediterranean diet. Every therapist I saw told me I was too self-aware of my own existence. I don't even know what that means. Um, the lean meat complex carb diet is pretty tasty, says Caboose. It is. I, I don't. Dude, Mark, I apparently... Um, let's see. I often, I, f uh, I feel like offing myself after salmon. One fish I hate says Bobby. <laughs> standard American dietness. Yes, um, that's fucking. I mean, that is literally what it's called. It's called the standard American diet. The sad. Um, and if you don't think dietitians weren't aware of what they were doing when they did that, why well, was today a somber day? And welcome, Evan. Um, Will depression go away with a guy smoothie then? Uh, no, my, my smoothie wither might cause some depression. <laughs> uh, 
physical activity helps as well, Glazy. But no amount of physical activity will overcome a McDonald's Big Mac. Okay, there's better versions of it. Um, guys, movies are so bad, they make you want to die. Um, that means you're addicted, Glazy. You realize that's addiction, right? Like, you're aware of that? I can't put down pizza and Big Macs. You're addicted. <laughs> you're literally addicted to it. You're, you're no different than a fucking heroin addict or a meth head. Like, literally. As far as I'm concerned, addiction is addiction. So, it's a complex... Uh, f a psychopharmacological, physiological, and psychological uh, in uh, intertwining of uh, events, of factors. You're addicted. Hey, Rumble. Thank you. I just went to McDonald's. Is that why I'm depressed today? <laughs> Public. Probably the come down from from the from the food. Yeah. Do you re remember back to um, um, supersize me? And more, uh, and fucking uh, Morgan was um, like he would have those highs and lows psychologically. He'd he'd eat McDonald's and he'd have a high, and then he would just have a low. Right? Like it it it. There are peaks and valleys. There's crashes with fast food. Ah, thank you, Rumble. Um. Uh, Evan, we literally just covered a study that showed switching to a Mediterranean diet is an effective uh, supplemental therapy for uh, moderate to severe clinical depression in young males 18 to 25. No, it is the food. It is the food. We've known it's the food for ages. Dietitians call this standard American diet the standard American diet for a reason. It's called the SAD. It literally is killing us. Why do you think heart disease is our number one killer? Like, you, do you, are you really of the opinion that the standard American diet is healthful and productive for our society? Is that a, is that a hill you're willing to attempt to die on? Because that, that would be amazing if you're going to try and argue that one. <laughs> At Crick's, I, dude, McDonald's would kill me now. I'll admit food does have an effect on it, but I mean, there's also the fact we live in a hellish society. Yeah, public, but when you live in a hellish society, every percentage counts, right? When everybody's coming for you, when it's coming from every angle, the the best thing you can do is not poison yourself from the inside out, right? Like, yeah, you're getting fucked left, right, and center. We live in a hellscape of a society, but the least you can do is make sure that you're doing everything internally that you can do, right? Not poisoning yourself internally, getting the physical activity that, that your body requires, not only desires, but requires. Yeah, exactly. Wither gets it. Sure yourself up. That's. Man the barricades. Arm the defenses. Ah, Patronum and mood, food and mood. And food is a major percentage, and I don't do a good job with mine, but I'm working on it. Good good on it, Patronum. Fine, I'll learn to make some healthy, good, healthier milkshakes at home, says Karina. Um, in what way do we live in a hellscape society? Uh, we just gave $10 billion to a, uh, uh, to a billionaire as a bailout for fuck's sake we gave 125 billion dollars of a corporate tax break just senate just voted on this shit right we gave 53 billion dollars to corporate outsourcers we gave 780 billion dollars to the military industrial complex we voted against a 15 dollar minimum wage 
what oh what else oh i don't know the disparity in marginalized communities the overactive prison industrial complex the lack of access to health care the a fact that our uh, our states some of our states have uh, maternal uh, mortality rates that are comparable to literal african nations um and not the good ones that you're thinking of they're like well it could be no no pookie, right? If you get, uh, if you're in Texas, the matern uh, the maternity uh, mortality rate there is something along the lines. I believe we we found Haiti and Bangladesh. So if you envision yourself giving birth in some place like Haiti or Bangladesh, that's what it's like giving birth in Texas. That's the comparable mortality rates and adverse event, uh, major adverse event reporting rates. Uh, in that part of the world. We have a corporate climate that is bound and determined to burn this world alive while we're all still on it for the purposes of small amounts of shareholder dividend greed. We've got a regressive set of people uh, uh, advocating for and pushing policy through our, um, our government at present that is looking to remove protections such as privacy and bodily autonomy. We have people who die regularly from preventable illnesses because of our poor healthcare outcomes. We have more homeless, uh, we have more empty houses than we have homeless people in this country, yet we have empty houses and yet we have homeless people in this country. We have a policing system that it dates back to, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Non-binary. Um, we have a policing system that dates back to literal purchasing by the uh, the industrial and mercantilists at the t uh, the turn of that century, combined with slave patrols from the Deep South in an unbroken thread that extends to today. We have some of the poorest educational outcomes in the world, despite being overwhelmed with confidence. We have an oligarchical slash capital class that screws us in the ass every fucking three seconds, every time we turn around. They're, uh, they're absolutely uh, performing traitorous actions against us. So, I mean, you know, hellscape. Hellscape. And so, hellscape of a country. Go water instead this time. <laughs> Is it the mortality rate of Botswana? When people bring up Africa, it's never Botswana. You know this. Uh, one, peeps think way too short term. We got long term effects. Also, um,. Uh, hellscape for the 99%. Yep. Oh, also, um, we found more um, human remains here at Lake Mead. Um, the water level dropped down even more um, at Lake Mead because, don't worry, climate change isn't an issue. Um, and we found more human remains. <laughs> Oh, fuck it. Just one after another after another. We're just going to keep finding them, man. We're just going to keep finding them. It's that simple. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, no further information. Uh, they're estimating based on footwear somewhere between the 70s and 80s. You want to go? Do you want to go search with me this day? Dig, you know what? We could actually do that one weekend. Yeah, why not? Dig, are you down next weekend? We can we can we can go search. We'll go we'll go fucking hike around Lake Mead. I fuck you can get in my DMs, dig. Um You don't have solutions, just complaints, says the person who has Oh, it's just bland Cheetos! It's fucking bland Cheetos, everyone! Oh, bland Cheetos. You come back, you fucking masochistic little fr uh, kinky freak you. Oh, I, I love when the masochists come back. That's always hilarious. Um, make sure to bring a stick to poke the corpses with. I know, right? Oh. Uh, mm. 
Pook, I want to look for remains. Well, come on out to Vegas. We're looking for remains. Um, <laughs> dead bodies are a part of the local Vegas ecosystem at this point. Um, why are there so many? Why are there corpses in, in Lake Mead? The mob. The mob. Because we've been disposing of bodies in Lake Mead for fucking decades, man. <laughs> it's Vegas. Uh, what if you find an alien? Don't tell no. <laughs> no, the mob doesn't still exist in Vegas. Well, yes, it does. It just got kicked out. Um, <clears throat> there's a bigger mob now. The big boys came in. The real big dicks on the block. Multinational corporations. That's who came in who showed the mob, this is how you take some shit over, right? The mob got schooled by the real gangsters. Yeah, the capitalist class. Uh, no, for a time, Tarange, what they would do is rig the suicide and death st uh, statistics at the uh, uh, mort uh, at the uh, morticians and the medical examiner's office here in town, um, back in um, Goodman, um, not Carolyn Goodman, but Oscar Goodman. Oscar Goodman was um, our beloved mayor for many, many years. He was a former mob attorney. During his era, what would happen was that the suicide and murder statistics would get falsely reported. Oftentimes they would drive a body out to the uh, city limits or Paradise, uh, P Paradise Incorporated limits um, to drop it there so it could be discovered. So that's, yeah, for, for a while, those, those multinationals, yeah, they didn't drop the body in the fucking, in the lake. What they did was pay off the people in charge to rig the statistics so that it just didn't look like anybody committed suicide or got killed here. That's all. Oh yeah, huge, Akka, huge. Um, yeah, the, Mor the, the mob brought the Mormons in back in the day because they don't drink and they don't gamble, so they were trusted to do the books. A lot of the accounting departments um, in the casinos back in the day were run nearly exclusively by Mormons. Um, but yeah. Why the Mormons own half of Vegas still says dig. Yeah, it's it's a it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. So yes, we still have plenty of Mormons. Um, but yeah, dig, don't forget, get my DMs. We'll we'll go out. I'll I'll I will enjoy that. I could use uh let's see. Um are you available? Dig, dig. Can we do it like next Sunday? If we can do it next Sunday, I'd be down. Saturdays are kind of difficult for me now. They're kind of stacked a little bit. Yeah, we'll take, of course, we'll take pictures. Dig and I have already proven ourselves capable of taking pictures. Wait, I got called a daddy? Where? I don't even... I corpse date girl boss. <laughs> yeah, we'll go. Um, all right. <clears throat> um, we talked about Alabama banning ge uh, gender. Um, <laughs> um, all right. So was it? Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Random thoughts. Psychedelic museum. There may actually be one of those, but it's a good idea. There isn't. There is. There is a psychedelic museum. I'll be damned. Sorry, it's not an OG idea. Um, there's a couple of them. There's psychedelic art center. There's yeah. 
It is a thing. Well, I always assumed it was, it was just, uh, I mean, hang on. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, like. Yeah. Like, how is this, how is this new? This was on an episode of Bones like a decade ago, non-binary. Like, legitimately, that was... All right. Um, yeah, I'm like, isn't it? It's just the, the feet detach and the shoe preserves the, the foot, right? I'm like, that's that's always been the prevailing theory. I'm like, that's it was even on an episode of Bones. Um, oh, yeah, they don't. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing is if I have to report, then I want the money. If I pretend to not find, I don't want to deal with them pickies. Retire knots his dick. Fair enough. It's one of Mitch Hedberg's best jokes, too, says Carpe. Um,. Yeah. All right. So we did that. We did that. Um, oh yeah. Um, the study about uh, U.S. immigrants. It's uh, a fucking <laughs> MIT economists, right? Fucking MIT economist. It was published in um, American Economic Review Insights. Uh, it's called Immigration and Entrepreneurship in the U.S. Um, Compared to native-born citizens, immigrants are more frequently, oh, everything. Um, they're more uh, they're more likely to start business firms. They're more likely to create jobs. Compared to native-born citizens, they're more frequently in, uh, involved in founding companies at all scales. Um, so the real job makers in the U.S., the true job creators, are in fact... Ecuadorian. Either way. There you go. Help a lot of immigrants. More than half have their own businesses. Nonsense. Yeah. I, again. They took our jo They took our jobs. No, they created new ones, motherfucker. Um, but don't worry. Don't worry. Um, the Wisconsin Republican um, uh, state legislature has found a way to shore up to uh, to shore up those labor shortages, rather than um, you know pay workers what they're worth, uh, especially given current economic situ uh, uh, situation uh, and variables. Um, instead, what they did is uh, uh, pass a bill that allows 14 year olds to work to 11 p.m. Uh, the, Wisp the Wisconsin Republicans uh, that basically run their legislature has, have decided to let's, let's just start doing child labor. And before any of you fucking fiscal conservative douchebags start going, but what about family businesses? This is specifically targeted at businesses such as McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell. It's the fast food industry. It's the short order cooks. It's the uh, it's all of that like first line, first uh, first job sort of entry work that they're looking to use this for. Um, so yeah, that's you know rather than pay the workers what they're worth, let's just let's uh, let's just make sure that like you know kids can fucking work late. How so, Bobby? Uh, damn, Ecuadorian, they're taking our jobs. Uh, and to think, Milwaukee once actually had a socialist mayor. Wonder what changed. Uh, yep, instead of raising wages, they lowered the age requirements. It is. I mean, it's just true. But we're all family here at McDonald's. Yeah. Run. If you hear that shit, if you if you work at a place and they're like, we're a we're a family here, get the fuck out. That place is shit. Creates a new department for customer service, lowest salary, 65 a year in Louisiana. Damn, Bobby. Hook a brother up. 
And you need a consultant? Come on. Let's get some nepotism up in this bitch. I'm like I'm like a brother-in-law or something at this point, right, Bobby? Fucking uh, give me a remote consulting gig. Um, something, something, something treat indigenous people better. Mm, money, please. Um, <clears throat> wait till there's a 12 year old serving you at McDonald's. Do wither. I'm waiting for somebody who can't see over the counter. Fuck it. <laughs> Kellogg says I'm family too. I'm guessing I'm the family member that gets put in the basement. Yeah, dude, that's that shit. Dude, you work at a place that says we're a family, run. Dude, that place is shit. It's garbage. It's garbage tier. Guaranteed. Uh, me toad, so true. In fact, I have a story. Shoot, man. I need this many monies. <laughs> uh... Fucking bro, I used to work with a woman who used to say that. She wasn't a boss or supervisor. She had the same job title and, and told me that shit didn't zip me. I'd be like, shut the fuck up. What? Shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up, man. Oh, man. Oh, let's see. Oh, um, HR1 is being voted on this week. Uh, House Resolution 1. Um, you'll, uh, if you, uh, if you catch McConnell talking about it, you'll hear him talking about, like, if you hear McConnell talking about a power grab this week, he's talking about HR one, HR one establishes automatic voter registration and prevents voter purges. It ends gerrymandering, expands early voting, and, um, it takes a swipe at citizens United. Um, and so that's the power grab. It's, it's, it's about, you know, us getting some power and not the one percent so if you hear mcconnell if you hear the turtle rattling off about some power grab this week that's what he's talking about he's talking about hr1 where we're attempting to you know make sure disenfranchised voters can vote um <clears throat> i told her not to put her makeup in the shirt first she said but we're a family uh we're a family we're the kind of family that puts our kids in cages you heard me um <clears throat> They may be too young to count customers change, but they can't. Uh, they also can't count their wage. So win, I guess. Uh... Oh, yeah. Caboose. No, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, for those... <clears throat> For those that have access um, to the resource list um, on the Discord server, I added a couple of things that you should probably have. Um, so, if you have a if you have a library card on the re on the Discord server, chances are you have access to the resource list. Um, and, um, yeah, the last three items, uh, two of which will apply to any, any given person probably. Um, but yeah, for those of you that use Twitch in a browser, um, you might be interested. And for those that encounter, um, paywalls on a regular basis, you might be interested as well. There might be some technology laying around the discord server waiting for you. Um, <clears throat> also. Um, as I stated, there will be an invite-only matrix protocol-driven element server um, shortly. It exists. Um, we just have to coordinate that. Um, we'll do that on a, a post-show VC. Um, so we have voice call capability, video call capability, end-to-end -end encryption, the whole thing. Um... Crimson, you know, politics is about one of the few things that can make you hope for three strokes to happen within the few, within a few days of each other. I know, right? Oh, um, all right. Mm, let's see. Oh, you know what? While we're here, okay. Before we do Popo's bizarre adventures, let's do this.
So probably a few of you are like, what's the rent? Right? Doesn't look bad. Looks like, what, a college dorm? <laughs> it's got computer, got a bed, got a mini fridge. It's Norway. No, Caboose got there first. It's Norway. It is. This is a Norwegian. This is a common Norwegian prison cell. This is, this is what an average prison cell in Norway looks like. Um, it is, they have such a low recidivism uh, rate that in fact they had to start shutting down prisons. Norway actually began co-locating prisoners for the surrounding nation states um, because they essentially proved that they could lower their recidiv recidivism rate to such an extent that they stopped needing prisons. They had them built, and for a while they had problems, but then Norway switched to a restorative justice model, and as a result of that, their rec recidivism rate dropped just right into the well. <clears throat> And so they had to start shutting down prisons. And what they started doing was offering their services to the surrounding regions as well. And so Norway is literally decreasing the amount of criminals at a multi-nation state level due to their progressive prison system. They are so good at treating prisoners the way they should be treated in Norway that they lower the rate of criminality in nations around them. It's, they get bulk goods. They get all sorts of stuff. They get access to higher health care. They get access to higher education. They get access to all sorts of things. College professors, mentors, psychologists, therapists. They get access to everything that would be necessary for the restorative and remediated process of healing somebody who was wounded by society. This is what an average prison cell in Norway looks like. And it works. And it works. So, with that happiness... Shall we start Popo's Bizarre Adventures, everyone? Oh. So, I need to move some windows so I can get some things where some things need to be. Um, anyone here in Norway I can marry for some... Uh, so... First up, good old Vicky White, an escaped inmate, Casey Cole White. So why are we talking about inmates? Because uh Yeah. Yeah, Karina. Uh somebody somebody fucking keep an eye. Somebody remind Karina. Yes. Because the corrections officer here, this woman right here, helped this this happy gentleman escape. Um, they're on the run right now. Yes, she fell in love. Um, <laughs> she, uh, they're, they're on the run right now. And in fact, the marshal service, oh, they just got caught? Oh, good for them. Together, together. Uh, an hour, announcement was an hour ago. Well, then fuck that announcement. Um, I completely disregard that announcement because they're fucking up my, um, my headline schedule. So they're still on the run and, um, just keep an eye out for them. Um, yeah, I don't care. I literally am saying, okay, which part of you people don't get the memes yet? Um, 
Yes. So, well... Are we going to have to deal with you, Evan? Feels like we're going to have to deal with you. He seems like a happy fellow. He seems like a happy fellow. I, I'm sure they'll have a long, happy life together with um, um, between themselves. I'm sure they'll they'll get along great. Either way, keep an eye out for um, um, for Vicky White and um, what was his name? Casey Cole White. I'm sure you'll be seeing them. Either way. Um, <clears throat> So, Florida. Florida, 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 Florida. Oh, Florida. Tampa. Tampa, in this, in this instance. Um, a Florida sheriff's deputy was arrested. Hey, 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 hey. He was arrested. He was arrested. He was arrested. A Florida sheriff's def, uh, deputy um, set, well, he set his home on fire. Now you're thinking, like, was it insurance fraud? Was it, you know, was he just, like, was he really, 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 really bad case of um, bed bugs that he was trying to, you know, resolve? Um, yeah, um, no. He was trying to burn his wife and children alive inside. Um, it was a attempted multiple homicide. Um, the ever so surprising statistic uh, coming out of the police is always um, showing that they are disproportionately abusive towards uh, their domestic partners, proving true once again. Brian Williams, a former deputy now with the sheriff's office, is out on bond, by the way. Um, so... Yes, they were, they were, he and his wife were in the process of getting a divorce, uh, a divorce. Um, he didn't want the house to be turned over to his ex. Um, so he decided to burn the house down with the soon to be ex and children inside of it. Um, he broke the furniture, he put holes in the wall, he tackled the ex-wife, he set fire to their bed, um, he, <laughs> he, while screaming, neither of them would get the house, he was, um, he was asked to be arrested and taken to jail, I, again, non-binary, why are you tagging me with this shit, man? Some weird, like, I get it, like, I get it the first time, I don't care. I don't give a shit. For memes alone, I kept going with the story. I literally said, who here isn't getting the memes? Like, I don't care. <laughs> I've already moved on to a new story. You can, you can stop tagging me with that story. I saw it the first time this, the link went by. I chose to ignore it. Thank you for trying. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um... So, anyway, back to good old Williams here. <laughs> uh, good old Brian Williams here. Um, literally coming off of a domestic violence injunction. Uh, the, violent, the domestic violence injunction that had been filed for, by his wife weeks prior to this incident, stating that the abuse had been going on for ages. Um, he was eventually, after he tried to burn the house down with him, with him, his wife and his children in it, though I, I have a sneaking suspicion he probably, tr he probably would have gotten out of the house if it, if it took. Um, he was arrested for arson, domestic battery, and two counts of violation of an injunction to, uh, for protection against domestic violence. Um, fired from his position, um, which, by the way, the arrest happened before the firing. Um, and yeah, then they let him out on a bond. So Brian Williams here, not no relation, um, 
former deputy with the Tampa, uh, the I'm sorry, the DeSoto County Sheriff's Office, uh, who tried to burn his wife and children alive in their in their home, is out walking around on a bond because. He's a former cop. I mean, I'm pretty sure if most of us try to execute our soon-to-be ex-wife and children in a house fire, arson, domestic battery, two counts of violation of an injunction, the violation of the injunction alone probably should have kept him behind bars. He already had uh, he already had a TRO against him, but instead of uh, uh, instead of you know handling the fact that the TRO had been violated, they let him out. They let him out. This guy is a known attempted murderer, spousal abuser, tried to burn his own children alive. And because he's a former cop, they basically let him out on bond. So, hey, fire. So, while we're in Florida, let's swing by Miami-Dade. Um... By the way, if you didn't know uh, the guy that Miami Dade Dade is named after, um, he's uh, an in, he's a uh, an army officer that was charged with uh, charged with as in given orders to um, go kill a bunch of Seminole indigenous um, people who lived in in the Florida region at the time. Um, he got massacred. He got massacred. He got massacred like 108 to three or some shit like that. Like the Seminoles lost three people and Dade lost like 108 somehow in the grand tradition of like, um, the, the like redneck States, right. In the grand tradition, grand tradition of those that fly the battle flag of Northern Virginia. It's not the Confederate flag kids. Um, in the grand tradition of those that would fly the stars and bars, um, he was a complete and utter loser. Yeah. Um, that is that is a tendency in those sorts of states that they build statues and, like, you know, give days to absolute losers. People who lost massive battles uh, because they were losers. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the Deep South, uh, in general, they lost. They got their shit kicked in. Um, they've always been the losers in this country. So let's look at Miami Dade. What's Miami Dade up to? Well, four of their former correctional officers are charged with murder because they like to met out, shall we say, um, institutional justice, um, behind the scenes. Uh, Christopher Rowland, Kirk Walton, Ronald Connor were arrested Thursday, and the fourth officer, uh, Jeremy Godbolt, uh, was arrested at LAX trying to flee. Um, they all face multiple charges, second-degree murder, conspiracy to commit second-degree murder, aggravated battery on an elderly or disabled person, and cruel, uh, cruel treatment of a detainee. Um... And they make fun of us for participation trophies. It is true. Um, so, yes, it's, of course, I mean, yeah, yes, yes, elderly or disabled. Um, well, so. Essentially what. uh what they did. I'm just trying to see if like I have any pictures or footage that I can show. Um, no. Okay. So essentially what happened is in inmate um, through piss on one of the corrections officers. Uh, no worries, cat. Um, 
I'm getting tagged multiple places. Um, all right. Okay. Um, thank you, Karina. So, hey, I've heard that song before. Yes, uh, one of the uh, one of the inmates tossed uh, a cup full of piss on one of the corrections officers. So they kicked the shit out of him, drug him to a transport van, and then somewhere between, like, they have the pictures, but there's dead spots. Um. Minutes before, like, you know, as they were dragging the inmate, like you literally, you can see the, the, the head is slumped. The legs are being dragged into the transport van. Um, so somewhere in between the moments captured on camera, they beat this guy so fucking senseless, um, that they, um, caused, all sorts of internal bleeding. They then tossed him uh, into a van for transport. It was then a 300 mile drive from the Dade Correctional Institution where he was found dead by authorities afterwards. Um, so yeah, there's, there's actually 10 of them involved that like were initially, initially suspicious. Yeah. Clearly the truck just went over a speed bump, right? Um, yeah, they gave him, you know, you gave him a little of the old fashioned treatment. It's that simple. Um, so who wants to puke? Because this one, this one isn't going to like, this is just, this is just, this is like copyright infringement. This is, this is, this, this is um, like, bitch, get off our fucking. Get off our fucking lawn. Everyone, here is the Orange County Sheriff's Department mutual aid tent at a local event for Orange County. Because apparently the Sheriff's Department now does mutual aid. Um... This, I do believe, is Cali Beast. Why is every second county in the U.S. apparently called Orange County? Reasons. Uh, I don't know, Caboose, but I would have given anything to walk up to them at that booth. Oh, the questions I would have. Oh, Cupcake, it's, I, I don't, it's neither. <laughs> That's behind the orange curtain. It's neither. It's neither. Um, it, uh, this is this is essentially a public relations outreach booth. This is probably more like, hey, you know, we're fucking. Uh, it's mutual aids. Uh, they probably just arrest you. They probably would, but I would have loved some questions to to be tossed their way to walk up, be like, mutual aid, huh? Cool, that's interesting. So what are you doing for the community? What sort of dual power structure are you setting up? How are you uh, taking power away from your police department, from your sheriff's department? Um, yes, like the Instagram post holding the little kids. Yes, 100%. This, this is more, this is PR more than anything else. Uh, not enough melanin in the skin to be arrested on site. No, I get away with some lippiness first. Yeah, if they don't know I'm an anarchist, I get away with some limpiness for a little bit. Yeah. If they know I'm an anarchist, I just get tackled to the ground. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that happens. So there's the Orange County Sheriff's Department mutual aid tent uh, coming to a, uh, you know, place near you, I guess. Cat, I'd probably try and fucking figure out and integrate, but you know they're not. Um. All right, everyone, meet Brian Jeffrey Raymond. This is Brian Jeffrey Raymond. Everyone, he's a former CIA officer. He worked as a U.S. Embassy staffer, sort of like undercover. He is, he is uh, classified, he is, he is described 
I think best as um, a experienced sexual predator. Um, he has um, <clears throat> drugged and raped at least 26 women that we're aware of. At least 26 women that we're aware of. Now, you see, he's already pleaded guilty to drugging and sexually assaulting at least 26 women while he was on assignment abroad. But you see everyone, he's appealing because he is impotent. And therefore, he couldn't have done what he was accused of. Even though there's plenty of evidence to, uh, to convict him, and he admitted to the fact, um, per his own admission, um, that he uh, was guilty of drugging and sexually assaulting at least 26 <clears throat> women. Um, investigators, you know, found over 500 photos and videos of unconscious women in, in Raymond's own bed. Um, he could be seen in the various shots, holding open the women's eyes, waving their limp arms and legs around, or putting his fingers in their mouths to show that they are indeed passed out cold. Um, but you see, somehow he's not guilty because he's, he suffers from erectile dysfunction, apparently. Um... He, uh, <clears throat> by the way, the way he got caught was a passerby reported seeing, quote, a naked hysterical woman desperately screaming for help on the terrace of a Mexico City apartment leased by the U.S. government. Investigators then investigated and found, well, Mr. Uh, Brian Jeffrey Reynolds here, uh, his little rape studio. <laughs> yes. So, either way, yes, that's just, just, you know, just an example of, it happens at this level, 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 it happens all across it. Like I've said before, if I had to include rape in the master list that I'm assembling, I'd be doing it for the next three years. Conservatives rape a lot. Uh, leased by the U.S. government. So he spent my health care money on raping women? Yes, he did, Zippy. He, in fact, did. Yes. Or rather, you know, the CIA did and the State Department did. Yes. I couldn't have raped those women. I ran out of Viagra. Can't run out of Viagra, man. You've got to get a supply. And today's sponsor of, uh, of Popo's Bizarre Adventures is BlueChew.com. Get your prescription for, uh, uh, for Viagra filled in the mail. Uh, <laughs> it's a real company too, by the way, and they really do do that. Um, uh, just the Okinawa base alone could feel a book with sexual assault. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> It's so bizarre that some people assume to have a willy is necessary to rape someone. Um, the UK is still that way to a certain extent. Um, the UK only recently changed their laws, like within the last couple of years. It was literally impossible for a woman to rape a man in the UK up until like a handful of years ago. It Legally, it could not. There was no charge. There was no charge you could do because... All of their sexual assault and rape laws were predicated upon um, the insertion. And so up to recently, there was nothing that could be done in the UK. Uh, it depends on the state. Some of the states were very, very slow to adopt. Let's just put it that way. <clears throat> Oh, I mean, chew toy fucking legally. Sure. Legality finally catches up to morality. No fucking dude. There's still a lot of people that dude. There's a lot of people that don't think men can be raped. Not by women. At least that men can be raped by other men, but there's, there's a lot of fucking people, a lot of fucking people, a lot of women, by the way, um, that do not believe men can be raped by women. 
Uh, what is rape? The Sexual Offenses Scotland Act 2009. Scotland's always ahead of the fucking curve over there. What is, what is, what is, fucking, Jesus Christ. The Sexual Offenses Scotland Act uh, 2009 states that rape occurs when a person intentionally or reckless, recklessly penetrates. So, wait, 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 would Cawthorn fall under this one? R intentionally or recklessly penetrates another person's vagina, anus, or mouth with their penis. All right, all right, Cawthorn's still in the running. Where the victim does not consent and the person responsible has no reasonable belief that the victim is giving consent. So, yeah, it's still, Scotland still, Scotland still is on board with it. You have to have a penis to be a rapist. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Totally, totally. That's, yeah. Yeah. Occurs, rape occurs when a person intentionally or recklessly penetrates another person's vagina, anus, or mouth with their penis. So, like, I can just fist you. Like, I can just fist you and we're good. Like, that's, that's totally not, like, I can go, like, fucking Texas baseball team and use a broom handle. <clears throat> Amber Heard's expert would say only men were aggressors. She brought up homosexual couples when asked if a man could be a victim. Oh, Jesus Christ. Dude, that, that trial's a fucking shit show. Um, Caligula did nothing wrong, says Carpe. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Hashtag free Caligula. Hashtag Caligula did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, lesbians get a pass. Yeah, no, for real. Yeah, even though lesbians have a higher domestic violence rate than uh, gay cop, uh, gay men. <clears throat> Don't nobody wants to talk about that one. Nobody wants to talk about that one. Do they have a significantly, disproportionately larger domestic violence rate between uh, lesbian couples than they do gay male couples? It's a thing. It's a thing. Ain't nobody want to be talking about that one. And nobody wanted to talk about that one. <laughs> What's up, Caleb? Uh, stop it. We can only talk about acceptable inequalities in society. Uh, lesbian bondage is so much harder than straight. No way, really? Yeah, no, Rex. That's actually a real statistic. Um, yeah, domestic violence is lower. Um, in it's domestic violence is higher in, um, homosexual couples, but only when you factor in lesbian couples, if you remove lesbian couples from the equation, domestic violence rates is lower or lower in homosexual couples. Um, it's the lesbian couples that drive the rates up. Um, the homosexual males have a, a lower average rate of domestic violence incidents, whereas lesbian couples have a higher rate of domestic violence. I don't know what it is about. Look, I have no sociological insight into this. I have no, nothing I can say beyond that just these are the numbers. Like, this is, this is how it plays out. Because <laughs> Zippy said, because lesbians aren't homosexuals, they just haven't found the right guy. Oh, man. <clears throat> um, so, here is my favorite pair of stories <laughs> Karina women be shopping um <laughs> just just as I did it fuck it just sort of washed through women be shopping <laughs> just, it's so dismissive <laughs> fuck it women be crazy y'all <laughs> It's, it's in that category of just so just like offhand flippant remark. I love it. I love it. Oh, fucking A. Okay. So, oh, this isn't, okay. So this isn't my, this isn't my favorite pairing. I've got a pairing of stories in this list that I adore, but uh, New Zealand true, uh, sent wage gap between men and women, shrimping with cohorts through the population. What nobody mentions is a part time work is a double digit plus in favor of women, which I guess is not vogue in vogue to discuss. Not sure how it is in the U.S. I don't know. Uh, I don't know here. Uh, chew toy. Oh, you'd have to look into it. So, <laughs> um, Florida as well. We're back to Florida. Um, Lake Wales, Florida. Um, I'm not even in, sh I'm not even sure where the fuck that is. I've never been to Lake Wales, Florida. Let's look at a map really quickly. Okay, so it's sort of, it's sort of online with Tampa. It's sort of in this. Uh, it's it's sort of online with Tampa. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I blame I blame U-Haul. If they just made their booking system much more simple, there would be significantly less rates of domestic violence between lesbian couples. I swear to God, it's so complicated. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so, a sheriff's volunteer officer, um, age 69, <sighs> So, he's a volunteer officer. Like, he was allowed to have a uniform. He was allowed to have access to, like, the vehicles, like, squad cars. He was out, like, patrolling. He was out in the field. Like, this is, this is like a volunteer firefighter, only volunteer cop. So... Same sort of powers. He still had the ability to arrest, apparently, in some form or fashion, or detain at least. Um, he was selling oxycodone out of the out of the cop car. Yeah, um, he was he was selling oxys out of the cop car. That's 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 what he was doing. Um, he was all <laughs> he was also a convicted felon already. And when they checked his home, they found baggies of cannabis. They found baggies of oxycodone. But they also found firearms. Um, this dude was a convicted felon who was a, a volunteer cop who was selling oxys out of the cop cars. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. This is... <clears throat> This is the sheriff. We're embarrassed. Someone messed up 12 years ago on a background. He's been a stellar volunteer, very well loved, done a good job, except when he's selling oxys out of the car using it as cover. That's the sheriff. The sheriff said he's been a stellar volunteer, very well loved, done a good job, except for when he's selling oxys out of the car using his cover. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like oh, it does. It does great work, except for you know that part. Five uh, D play. I think, dude. I think it is. I think it's a five D play. Hundred percent. Good on him. Um. Let's see. He fit right in. <laughs> uh, so I can't show you the video, of course. Uh, well loved by the community until his supply runs out. Exactly, Garbay. Got to keep him. Got to keep him fucking fresh. Got to keep him fresh. Um. So here is Quandry Sanders. Okay, this this man's name is Quandry. Q-U-A-N-D-R-Y. Quandry Sanders. Um, Quandry was not a good boy. Okay. Let's, let's, let's put this, let's frame this correctly. Um, Quandry was not a good boy. Um, he was a bit violent. He was, um, he was, well... He was a bit violent. He was a bit of uh, he had a bit of a, a an aggression issue, shall we say, um, and he had a, a propensity for threatening um, people with violence. So when um, December fifth of last year, by the way, we're just getting this footage. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding you. This is May 9th. Um, Fucking, um, so on December, uh, on December 5th of last year, um, he was at the home of a man who was under a protective order. Um, Mr. Sanders had a dispute with the woman, um, at the residence and he violated a protective order. And as a result, the caller called the police 
and reported that Mr. Sanders was present in violation of a protective order and was in possession of a firearm. Um, he was, at the time, refusing to let one of the residents leave. Okay? Like I said, he's not a good boy. This is Quandry Sanders. He's not... I, I will be honest, for a moment, I considered not even including him because it's a difficult case to argue for. But here is the, here is the case for de-escalation, right? When the officers rolled up, and there is footage, there's, there's complete footage. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, when he, the officers rolled up, they used the, uh, the, 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 the loudspeaker on their vehicle to announce their presence and to tell him to come outside. A woman at that time um, exits, the, uh, exits the home, and Mr. Sanders at that time exits from, uh, he emerges from the back door. Um, you can see him clearly. He complied with the officer's commands to show his hands. Um, he ran back inside. <clears throat> he freaked out. He ran back inside the house. Um, when he started exiting the house again, the officer, one of the officers who rolled on the scene approached him, and this is, we have body cam footage of this, um, directing him to put his hands up and to get down on the ground. He moves slightly by the refrigerator, and as he raises his hands, all captured on video, when he raises his hands, one of the officers shoots him four times. He falls to the ground. The officers start yelling, hands, hands, hands. It shows him sitting up with his hands above his head, at which point he is shot repeatedly again. Fifteen rounds were fired. The four rounds by Officer Ronan <clears throat> and the 11 rounds by Officer Hinkle. So, you can clearly see in the video the hands go up. And four shots are fired. He slumps down. He's sitting with his hands above his head. And it is that point which he is shot 11 more times. They shout at him at that point to, roll, to stay down and roll over on your stomach. You can hear him say, I'm down. I can't breathe. They then drag his limp body, leaving a trail of blood on the driveway, of wh at which point they do not begin any mer emergency medical assistance for over two minutes after firing the final shots. So, yes. Um, if you want the footage, here's some of the footage. Link in chat. Now, <clears throat> the two officers were fired from their, uh, their, their jobs on the police force in January 7th after an internal investigation. It's fairly quick, given December 5th to January 7th, basically a month, right? Uh, all things considered, after an internal investigation, credit where credit's due to the Lawton Police Department, um, they said we, it was not in conformance with our policies and standards, um, and as a result, there, uh, they were separated from the department, and there will be a, uh, a separate criminal investigation and, char uh, and charges filed at the state level because it was handed over immediately to the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation um, and the county district attorney. Um, they will be issuing charges probably this Friday. So... Credit where credit's due. Um, the only thing that I have major criticism of here is the $25,000 bail that we know would probably be $100,000 for, uh, uh, for somebody else. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, Mr. Ronan 
the officer who fired uh, 11, I'm sorry, for the initial four rounds, um, Mr. Ro- uh, Mr. Ronan was previously under investigation for the fatal shooting of another black man. Um, that was January 2021. Uh, in the year of twenty, uh, the year of our Lord tw- uh, two thousand and twenty-one, Officer Ronan managed to summarily execute two black men. Uh, the first shooting occurred just three miles from where Mr. Sanders was shot. Um, it's a city. Lawton is a city of uh, just over ninety, just over ninety thousand um, populous. So about an hour southwest of Oklahoma City. So in a town of just over ninety thousand people. This one officer had managed to summarily execute two black men in one year. <clears throat> so, yes. Credit where credit's due. They got fired. Now, they haven't been charged yet, Glazy. They got, ch- they got fired. They didn't get fired for the first one either, by the way. <clears throat> they didn't fire a charge for the first one. Um, but for this one, um, they both were released from their contracts, and it looks like the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation and the county district attorney probably will be filing charges. So what charges they, 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 they properly file, we'll see uh, after that, that point. Um, oh. This is, this was, yeah, it was. All right. Everyone gets one free murder, I guess. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, what do you think the steps for improving this kind of situation are for the U.S.? It depends how you want to approach it, Chew Toy. I've given multiple examples before of how one can tackle this problem. Um, there's even free market solutions if you want to implement them. There's a multitude of ways. <clears throat> um, a f- uh a four-year college degree is a good starting point. Um, if you just want to implement a pure market solution, a um, a personally held liability insurance policy is your starting point. Um, you dissolve the police union. You institute a uh, personally held liability insurance policy. Um, and if a police officer is not able to provide a, uh, a liability policy then they are ineligible for service. The insurance companies, after one or two payouts, depending on the size of those payouts, will start to jack the rates through the roof, making it more difficult for them to maintain their liability policy. You pay out one ten or $15 million policy, uh, policy payout, and you will be uninsurable. Um, and at that point, you literally just can't be employed. So there's some educational methodologies. There's some pure market solutions that you could implement that the capitalists would be more than happy to go with. The libertarians would fucking go with you on that one. You could go mutual aid and uh, community-driven program like the Minneapolis Star and um, Cahoots program over in Oregon. Um, There's a variety of ways to begin uh, tackling this, but... Don't look for it to happen anytime soon. So, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Oh, Bentleyville. Bentleyville, Pennsylvania. Trooper Brian Rousseau. Trooper Trooper Brian Rousseau pulled... um, This is is a federal lawsuit that has just made... Okay, so this federal lawsuit, you you go back, you probably find it, stories about this starting around November of last year. The federal lawsuit has just reached a a, sort of a milestone in its process and its filing, and so it's moving forward. That's why we're talking about this now. Um, Trooper Rousseau, good old Brian Rousseau, pulled behind um, Holly Ellish, uh, Holly Ellish is a 34-year-old at the time, woman from uh, Bentleyville. She was headed home from work um, when she was pulled over for speeding. Um, she was pulled over for traveling five miles per hour over the speed limit. Uh, <clears throat> now, Ellish of... Um, Rousseau pulled behind Ellish and began following her. 
um, prompting her to, at that time, put her hazard lights on to notify the trooper that she intended to pull over, as is standard policy and procedure taught to drivers the country over. No, it is not Carpe. Um, Rousseau did not attempt to immediately stop Elish. <clears throat> she turned off her flashers and attempted to take the next exit. It was at that point that Rousseau activated his emergency lights. She pulled over and the trooper approached her car and gave her identification. Uh, she gave her, uh, she gave him her identification. This is all according to the complaint and probably uh, the evidence that will be turned up in discovery. <clears throat> he returned to the window, her window a few minutes later and then walked back to, uh, and walked back to Elish's uh, passenger side. He then asked for her, con her consent to search the vehicle. She refused. <clears throat> she refused. He replied with something along the lines of, I have the right to search your vehicle. At this point, a second trooper arrives. This second trooper speaks with Rousseau outside of Elish's hearing. She doesn't, she did not have that opportunity to hear what they said. The troopers then double teamed her and asked Elish to exit her vehicle. Again, asking for her permission to search her vehicle. Quote, fearing for her safety and knowing that the police did not have justification to search her vehicle, yet were insistent and intimidating in attempting to do so, Miss Ellish allowed the vehicle search to, uh, to occur under both duress and coercion. <clears throat> now, Ms. Ellish is not a drug user. Ms. Ellish is not a drinker. Ms. Ellish was merely headed home from working. So there was nothing to be found in the search. And after 15 minutes or so, two more troopers arrived. For those in the class that like to read ahead, please keep it to yourself. After 15 minutes, two, uh, two, uh, two more troopers arrived, this time including a woman. <clears throat> It was at that time that the female trooper directed Elish to stand beside a state police SUV on the side of the road and instructed her that she would begin a strip search. It was at that time that the trooper physically <clears throat> and visually inspected Elish's breasts. She then directed Elish to pull down her pants and underwear to her ankles and squat to the ground during which during which she was instructed to bend down to the ground with one knee and the trooper then performed a visual cavity inspection according to the complaint <clears throat> the trooper looked at ms ellish when putting gloves on her hand and said I'm sorry, this is the worst part of my job. Just before the trooper was to begin the physical cavity search, she asked Elish if she knew why Rousseau and the other trooper wanted the search done. In response, Miss Elish stated that, in fact, she did not know, that she did not have any contraband, and that she was simply on her way to a home from work to pick up her, uh, from work to pick up her child. It was at that time that the female trooper refused to carry out the cavity search and told Elish that she was free to leave. No criminal charges were ever filed. The traffic citation filed against, against Elish for doing 60 in a 55 mile per hour speed zone was dismissed at hearing after Trooper Rousseau failed to appear. The lawsuit does go on to note that the troopers never saw or found contraband on Elish or saw her drive erratically and that there was nothing that would require a urgent action or a warrantless search. The male officers involved in a <clears throat> beside the road search called out a female officer to strip search and vaginal vaginally penetrate someone they had pulled over for shits and giggles.
they were getting off on it. It's that simple. There was no anything. There's nothing. And even the female trooper refused to do the strips, refused to do the vaginal penetration after she realized that, oh shit, there's nothing going on here. <clears throat> no, the female cop raped her and then just refused to finger her. The, the female cop sexually assaulted the woman and then just refused to close the deal. No, she's not a good cop. She, she sexually assaulted a woman on the side of the road because her fellow officers told her to. No, that's not a good cop. A good cop wouldn't have done the sexual assault in the first place. A good cop would have done their due diligence ahead of time. A good cop wouldn't put up with that shit. A good cop would have resigned from the force up, up, immediately upon encountering that sort of thing. No, no pookie. She's not a good cop. She just found her line that she finally wouldn't cross. But that's it. She still violated her civil liberties. She still sexually assaulted her. She was still guilty and complicit of carrying out a conspiracy to, uh, to deny a, a citizen their rights. That's not a good cop. So, no. No. So let's talk about the 16-year-old trans girl. So for Europeans this is going to be a little confusing because I don't know if you guys know that we use cops to enforce school policy, right? Like if you're absent from school in Germany, say, the cops don't show up. Right? We use cops to enforce school policy. If you're absent from class, the cops show up. We use tickets. In fact, there was a recent study that found a disproportionate amount of all tickets given to kids. By the way, did you know we give tickets to students? We give tickets to students for infractions, things that we used to give detention and suspension for, now get legal citations and put students, kids, into the justice system ahead of time. So, in this instance, what we're dealing with is Tennessee. Tennessee, I lived there. I've, I have fond memories. <sighs> La latte. I stayed home from school one day because of panic attacks and the school sent a fucking cop. They did. I don't doubt that in the, uh, in the, in the least. Uh, <clears throat> the prison slavery industrial complex induction department moving into the schools. Yep, it's been there for a while too. So <clears throat> this is uh, Viowin. V-I-O-W-Y-N-N. Viowin. Uh, Viowin is a transgendered 16-year-old girl who lives in Tennessee who was live streaming Minecraft. Not Minecraft... Basically, what happened was she knew this was coming. So she hopped on a stream and made sure there was documentation and witnesses. When Wynn attends a school in Tennessee and that school refuses to correctly gender or recognize Wynn for who Wynn wants to be. doesn't matter whether... Win is or isn't. This is America. Win wants to be, therefore win is. This is how bodily autonomy works. This is how being a human being works. It doesn't really matter whether you have an opinion on this or not. The only opinion, in my opinion, that matters is Miss Wins. 
The school refused to recognize uh, Wynn's gender and as such continually misgendered, continued to refuse access to what is perceived to be the appropriate bathroom, refused to acknowledge any of the gender affirming uh, aspects of what a 16 year old would need affirmed for their transition and generally made life a living hell for Wynn. So Wynn stopped going because the school refused to give Wynn an education. They were making her life miserable. Well, <clears throat> since she didn't show up from school, the cops were deployed. You know, the heroes in blue. Well, the heroes in blue bust in. And you can see just the happy, 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 happy types. Right? Look at them both. Look at these pieces of shit. Just old, old white men. Just old white men. Right? They bust in and, dr quote, dragging her into foster care. And the douchebag cop even had the audacity to say, are you winning? Even did the fucking meme. Quote, this will probably be the last stream ever because they're trying to get me to either kill myself or go into foster care or something instead of just giving me an education. Honestly, I just want to go to school, but they don't want me to go to school because I'm trans. I'm just really stressed out. 17 minutes, well, 15 minutes later, the cops busted into her room and arrested her. They, they detained her forcibly. And that is the last update I have. All I can tell you, Tennessee has started arresting trans kids. You can qualify that however you want and say, well, Tennessee is arresting truant kids. Mm, no, in this instance, they're arresting a trans kid specifically for not being able to obtain the education that they are legally entitled to. Um, yeah, Keffels is the, the, the fellow trans live streamer that fucking got the footage out there and made sure like when it came down, it stayed up. So credit to Keffels for sure. Um, Vio Win, V I O W Y N N. Um, and if you want, here is where you need to start. Here's Keffels. So we're going to speed over this one. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of links in chat uh, for those that want to follow this story because it's a very big story, actually. Um, MIT's technology review is doing a... Um, series of things, an investigation into law, uh, law enforcement agencies, specifically the Minnesota law enforcement agencies. Um, but that investigation quote revealed an extensive surveillance network that targeted activists in the aftermath of, uh, murder of George Floyd. Uh, it, it is illegal surveillance. There is a lack of accountability. There is a disproportionate, uh, there are d disparities in the policing. Um, it is a, very large report and series of investigations that I am not going to get into, but part of it plays into the Minnesota Department of Human Rights report that's 72 pages. Um, I don't know, Karina. I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't know. Um, and so, yes. Um, feel free to look into it. It is a two-year inquiry, and plus, um, it is the, the 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 Minnesota Department of Human Rights is in, is consistent with the MIT Technology Review investigation, um, and they basically it has established the 
probable cause that the city of Minneapolis and the MPD violated the Minnesota Human Rights Act. Um, and so now the Minnesota De- Human Rights Department is going to work with Minneapolis public officials to work on like the specific changes that need to be made for enforceability within the court system. Um, but yes, there is 700 hours, 40, 480,000 pages of documents. It is all sorts of deep. Um, so Yes, um, there is also the technology review on um, the secret police new era of surveillance uh, as well. That's the like the overarching. So the latest link I just put into chat will do the shadowy um, surveillance machine that that was built around the George Floyd protests. And then the police system that for watching the George Floyd protests and act- surveillance activity mechanisms. Um how it was kept going inside. Uh, they then like delve into the app that the Minneapolis police used to collect data on journalists at protests. Uh, and then there's further investigation into how they use fake social media profiles and systems to surveil black people and infiltrate political activists. And so it is, it is a large, um, it is a large topic. Um, and so have at it, uh, if you so choose. Yeah, no, I mean, here's, here's all the links. If anybody wants the fucking Keffel stuff, like that's, you can, um, <laughs> zippy. Um, but let's see. All right. Oh, do we have his picture? We have his picture. We have his service picture. Oh, I love when we have the service picture. I love when we have the service picture. Um, meet Sean McKenzie. Um, no, no zippy. Well, I mean, he's not, no, he's not rapey. I mean, it depends how you define rapey, I suppose. Um, this is, this is Sean McKenzie. Um, he was arrested last Tuesday. Um, he's facing 32 counts of sexual abuse of children and two counts of criminal abuse of communications facility. Uh, 21 counts of child pornography, 10 counts of dissemination of photograph, videotapes and computer depictions and films. So, you know, I'm sure he's one of the good apples, right? Is that, is that one of the good apples they talk about all the time? Hmm. Maybe, I suppose. I don't know. Uh... How many service rewards did he get? Actually, um, he is, hang on. He has received accolades before for something. I forget what he, um, um, He is an awarded cop. Yeah. Um, oh, also, by the way, he, uh, one of the things he, <laughs> he liked to put cameras in bathrooms um, where children were present. <clears throat> sort of his thing. Sort of his thing. Sort of his thing. He liked, he liked putting cameras in bathrooms of children. Um, Is that, oh, finally, getting close to those. So, I mean, that's all I have to say about him, right? You know, another kid fucker. Another conservative kid fucker. How do you know he's conservative, Kai? Because he's a cop. They're all conservative. Um, 
So, Barris McKenzie. Barris McKenzie is a 64-year-old. Um, he's um, in Florida, by the way. Um, Lauder Hill, Florida. He's an independent entrepreneur. Let's just put it that way. He, he sells things out of his van. Not illegal things. He sells coconuts and sugar cane and sort of like uh, traditional snacks and like beverages from around the Caribbean. Um, he's, you know, he gets by. He gets by. He was at a quick stop food store on Northwest 16th Avenue. And unfortunately, Mr. Mr. McKenzie... Um, <clears throat> didn't pay the tithe to our overlords. You see, Mr. McKenzie um, didn't have a permit to sell his goods. So the cops roll up on him and, quote, It's a, uh, quote, wrap it up, boss, wrap it up. And the officer sort of, you know, come on, man. Come on. You can't sell here. McKenzie ignored the request. Cop says, what did I tell you? Mackenzie goes, it's, it's a, you again, man. Can't you just give me a break? I just got here because someone called me. Just just relax. So, Mr. McKenzie was upset by the cops attempting to roust him from engaging in free market commerce without the yoke of the state intervening in between he and his legitimate clientele. If the libertarians and the free market uh, ones want to... Uh, um, uh, in fact, yes, Skeeter, there's already Marsha Blackburn talking about doing that. She is a GOP senator. Um, she floated that idea. So yes, in fact, that's a real thing that's been floated by conservatives already. But anyway, back on track. Um, <clears throat> it was at that time that Mr. McKenzie used two Jamaican curse words and told the cop to go look for some thieves or someone who's selling Coke and crack and leave him alone. The body cam footage confirms Mr. McKenzie asking the officer to give him a break. It was at that time that the cops asked him for ID and he locked himself in his van for a few moments. Literally, after, after several moments, he exited the vehicle, and, but he continued to ignore the officer's commands to stop selling. It was at that time that the officer began yelling, do you want to get tased? Do you want to get tased? Do you want to get tased? He was, stuck, he was struck three times with a taser before the officer placed handcuffs on him. Per the report, he was charged, arrested and charged with resisting without violence and violating a city, a city ordinance. Uh, <laughs> personally... I think it's a pretty clear example of how cops don't know how to de-escalate and they only know how to escalate. Yes, Mr. Barry McKenzie here was clearly, uh, Barris, sorry, Barris McKenzie, um, was looking to not de-escalate, but it is the job and role of the police officer to be able to handle that situation. Um, and so tasing a 64-year-old Jamaican dude who's selling coconuts and sugar cane out of the back of his van seems like a bit of a waste of our time, doesn't it? But you see, he didn't get a, he didn't get a permit. And so it then violence is allowed. The monopolization of force on behalf of the state imparted to those officers allows for the violent stopping of that transgression. It doesn't matter whether it is simply he doesn't have a permit to sell coconuts. If they tell him he can't, he can't. 
And it is, if he refuses, then they are authorized by the state apparatus to employ force to cause him to cease and desist. So these officers did what they do. They maintain the status quo. They maintain the status quo of the ruling elite. And the ruling elites say, you cannot engage in any market activity without providing us our cut. He didn't provide them their cut. Therefore, he was in violation of the rules, as it were. And he was engaged violently when he refused to stop being tased three times. And as we've seen before, being tased multiple times, especially in an advanced age as 64 is, can and oftentimes is fatal. So they risked killing this man over a city permit that wasn't purchased for selling coconuts and sugar cane out of the back of a van. Sure. Sure. I'm sure there's a few good cops. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's good apples. Roadside selling is an American tradition. These people are infringing on our rights, or, or on our heritage. I know, right? So here are, I've been waiting for these two stories. I have been waiting for these two stories. This, this is, this is. <laughs> okay. So. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, a three-month-old infant was kidnapped from an apartment, um, a friend of the child's family's apartment, right? There was a frantic 18-hour search by law enforcement, by the community at large, there was there were three people involved, three suspects, but a man snatched the baby boy from the San Jose apartment and took off. Broad daylight. Fucking broad daylight. This dude just kidnaps a fucking kid and goes, right? Now, the kid, the 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 manhunt for the missing boy and the suspects accused of kid, they 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 found him essentially the next day. This is, this is not the portion of the story that we will be covering, all right? This is the backdrop of the story that we'll be talking about. Now, amidst the, um, amidst the kidnapping of a three-month-old baby boy, San Jose Police Department... What were those guys up to? Well, <clears throat> for at least one officer, um, see if I can. Yes. Okay. Um, for at least one officer on the scene, what was true for him was that, yes, there may be a baby missing. There's a three-month-old on, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the lamp right now. Um, but really, you can't let a three-month-old being kidnapped in the middle of the day get in the way of your buzz. So one of the officers that showed up to the house that was directly engaging in the search for a missing three-month-old child was, well, drunk as a skunk. He was drunk. He was straight up intoxicated. Now, this wouldn't be that much of a story Right? Like the fact of the matter is, is that drunk cops are about as old as the day is long. It's sort of a grand tradition within police departments in the fraternal order for being drunk. Um, this happens 
on the heels, of course, of the San Jose police officer who died of a fentanyl overdose because he stole he stole drugs from the scene and they found him dead at his home from a fentanyl overdose. So right on the heels of a fentanyl overdose from a, a cop who got caught sneaking drugs from a scene, during the kidnapping of a three-month-old child, San Jose's police department again has another incident where an officer shows up to the, uh, to the crime scene drunk. Now again, taken individually, you'd be like, all right, well, you know, there's drug and alcohol abuse amongst high, pr- uh, you know, high pressure positions and professions. We know they have higher addiction rates. And so this is just an example of, um, you know, malformed coping behaviors admits to police department that is under stress. And maybe you, maybe you might be right. Um, if not for the fact that on the heels of that officer who was found to be drunk at the scene of the three-month-old child who had been kidnapped, we now know that another officer was at the home of the child, the apartment, that the, um, the child that had been kidnapped The very same case where in one room there's a dude basically walking around going, you know, you know what your, you know what your problem is? You think too much. That's your problem. You think too much. Right? You've got him in one room. We now know in the other room what was occurring was that another, uh, another cop was, Engaging in another coping behavior for a high-stress position, shall we say. Um, The other cop was in the other room rubbing one out. So, at a crime scene where a three-month-old child has gone missing, you've got one drunk cop, You've got a horny cop masturbating in the other room on the heels of a cop who got caught stealing drugs and dying from an overdose a week prior. This, folks, is the San Jose Police Department. This is the police department in San Jose. Is in the middle of a search, a manhunt for a three-month-old child, a cop in the apartment where the child was kidnapped from, took a couple of minutes to whip it out and rub one out. (laughs) I've been waiting for these two stories since I've started Popo's Bizarre Adventures this time. Like, I don't even... I don't even fucking, I don't even know. Oh, how did, uh, <clears throat> the aristocrats. Um, Marcus, I love you for that one. Um, Zippy, how, um, how'd they catch him? A resident spotted him. <laughs> Somebody saw him. Somebody straight up saw him. They fucking saw him. Um, they saw him at the sea. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It was, it was stopped immediately. It took them a few minutes to like report it, but it was stopped immediately. Right. Like the officers walked in on him. (laughs) Apparently by all accounts, the police detained one of their own at the scene because they fucking like one of the residents saw him in another room with his fucking willy out whacking it away. Yes, San Jose's finest for sure. Whacking it away and goes, there's a cop masturbating in the other room. And, you know, one of the cops like, "Ah, I'm sure they fucking they go in. The dude's got his fucking dick out in his hand. So, yeah, they the police detained him at the scene. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know which room thing. I wish I knew. Hey, level. Um, oh, I bet they let him finish. I bet they let him finish. Honestly, um, 
He's uh, the only thing we know detail wise. Here's what we know. He stepped away from the group inside the home and began to masturbate. Oh, <laughs> uh, I swear to God, there's a comedy sketch about this. Did someone say that? If, uh, say that right? I don't know, but I mean, if you find it, <laughs> did they help? But did they help him finish? Um, uh, yes. So you know. If you if you happen to be in San, San <laughs> Rev, if you happen to be in and around the San Jose, California Police Department, or anything in and around the San Jose metropolitan area, and you you planning on potentially having any interactions with the San Jose Police Department, understand you could probably get out of whatever ticketing offense that they're they're about to hit you with if you offer just to give them a hand job and a shot. It's like, hey, here's a here's a little mini uh, like an airline bottle of tequila, and I'll give you a fucking hand job around back. You let me go, because it seems to be that seems to be their thing. Key and Peele, sex detective, uncensored. Okay, duly noted. Oh. What if you get one of them lady cops? You kick her in the fucking gash and you run. Um, back to Pennsylvania. Back to Pennsylvania. This one's not as this one's not as amusing. I'll give you that one. Um, drunk cop. Drunk cop. Um, the state's bureau, uh, uh, bureau of criminal investigation is going to handle the, uh, the investigation, but a cop, uh, was found having blood alcohol levels three times the legal limit when he rammed into a firefighter's personal pickup truck in a parking lot in the fire station shortly before midnight. He, um, was driving around drunk with three times the legal limit in his in his um, state issued SUV. He he was driving around in his state police SUV fucking shit and he was in one of the shared community build uh, like parking lot buildings and boom just boom right into the fucking firefighters pickup truck. Uh <laughs> so yeah. 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 Ah, uh, yes, the age-old rivalry, right? Yeah, in the parking lot, on the fire station, and hit the personal truck. What a jackass. Yeah. Um, he was taken to the local hospital for testing. He was seen he, he had a point two four. Um, so <laughs> he's got two misdemeanor counts. That's it, by the way. He's got two misdemeanors. He'll be on restrict. He's on restricted duty. <laughs> this guy's this guy's r- riding around drunk. Uh, in his fucking trooper vehicle, <laughs> like in his SUV, fucking, um, and he got like two misdemeanors and he's still on the force. Yeah. Just off the temp. All right. So <sighs> this one comes from across the pond. You probably blacked out and that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. This one comes from across the pond. So there's going to be, there's going to be like different wee woos. I don't know if we get the wee woos and, um, but there's going to be like, you know, that weird accent that like the foreigners put on when we're around, you know, they don't keep that accent up by the way. Right. Like all of us know that, right? Like foreigners, there's no such thing as a foreign accent. Everybody speaks like, like Americans. It's just when we're around, they like to fuck with us. So so they put on weird fucking accents and stuff. It's totally a thing. The rest of the world does just to fuck with us. Trust me on that one. I've seen studies or something. Anyway, um, 0.24 in a hit of vehicle, fucking lightweight. Um, so apparently the uh, uh, Sussex police, well, you'll see. You'll see. Past 11, as seen in the video yesterday. Arthur was caught on dash cam running across the road where an unmarked police vehicle swerved into Arthur, colliding with him. Okay, it's difficult to catch, but did you guys catch that? Here, let's mute, let's mute fucking, yeah, exactly. Hello, governor, let's, let's, let's mute that, all right? So here's Arthur. Arthur darts across the fucking street, 
and the cop across the way veers into uh, uh, into oncoming traffic and hits the dude. I don't need you, bro. I just need your footage. Yeah. Whack. He, he, I mean, okay. So here's what you need to understand. One, the jaywalking thing isn't a thing over there. So, so for the Americans that are like, he just ran into traffic. Yeah, people run into traffic. Most of the world doesn't recognize jaywalking laws. That's not a thing for most of the world. Um, they have some in some places, but it's it's really, right? It's not a, bit, it's not a thing for most places. Um, so that's not a thing. People run into traffic. Now, Arthur would have been just fine. Had the cop not veered into oncoming traffic, crossing the center line, and hitting him with their car. Uh, so the Sussex police officer uh, who was driving that vehicle is now under criminal investigation, credit where credit's due, um, for, I mean... You know, attempted vehicular manslaughter. I don't know what we want to charge that with, but the fact of the matter remains, at the end of the day, he crossed the center line in order to hit a dude with his car. So, yeah. Um, I mean, they kind of do with her, just not in the same way we do. Ooh, 10 points, this cop. Um, why would people, uh, why would places value people over cars? I know, Patronum, weird, right? Um, yes, Crimson. In fact, J, um, the origin of J uh, for jaywalking, J used to be an old-timey uh, slur for poor people. It's poor people. Jaywalking is poor people walking. That's, that's you're being charged with being poor. That's what jaywalking means. Imagine if I, I said you're being charged with broke walking, right? That's, that's you know, poverty walking. You, you have received a citation for poverty walking. That's what jaywalking means. It's an old-timey slur for broke-ass motherfuckers. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Kai, did you see we bought a Formula One property? Since it's our taxes paying for it, figure we all own it. Hmm, nice. Uh, oi, bruv, you can't do a walk, uh, whack a book with your, kid, uh, with your car. Um, I, uh, latte, I did not know that. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's um, it's a thing. Uh, dig, I jaywalk everywhere. So do I, man. Um, a fact, uh, across the center line that demonstrates either incompetence or the level of inebriation or malicious intent. Take your pick. Yeah, tech support. Right here in Tulsa said fact, um, there was a lady with a gun walking near a school and she was really out of it. When the police car came up to her speeding, she freaked out and started shooting at the cop. The cop ducks and just revs the engine, runs over and neutralizes the subject. Yeah. Um, I wonder if there may have been a better way to not escalate that in the first place. I don't know. Yeah. Don't roll up and freak people out with fucking mental illnesses and guns. Uh, fucking, fucking A. Um, okay, so this one you you guys had to have heard of. Um, Florida, again, this is on St. Pete's Beach. Um, this is not the first time that the, the Pinellas, uh, Pinellas, um, fucking, it is Pinellas, but it's, it's Pinellas. Uh, Pinellas uh, County uh, Sheriff's Office has run someone over on the beach, but they ran somebody over on the beach. Um, it's like I said, not the first time, not life threatening injuries, but she did have to be transported to the hospital for sure. Um, fucking deputy Todd Bryan's marked Chevrolet Tahoe SUV. Fucking he was dispatched to a nine one one hang up call at a different location. He made a tight, a tight right turn as he took off and, and drove over a 23 year old woman while she was lying on her back in the sand. Front, front driver's side tire 
drives over this woman. Her name is Robin, by the way, drives over Robin's right side, mid to upper back area. So it's just sort of like all the, this stuff just boom, over it. She was transported to hospital as appropriate. But like I said, this isn't the first time this particular department has run someone over on the beach either, by the way. That's, this is not their first incident. <laughs> For most, most beach police are not like supposed to drive their SUVs like in the, the like the, the pedestrian areas. Most of them are relegate, relegated to like light vehicles, like four by fours, quads, that sort of thing. After a series of these incidents did occur, happened in California, it happened, else, happened elsewhere. Um, you're like, yeah, you're not supposed to be doing this, but cops are fat, lazy, and stupid. So they like to drive their SUVs on, on beaches. It's fun. Yo, the sand goes spray. Also, sometimes, you know, people go pop. <sighs> it's a new fad massage, right? Um, this one, we're going to pop up here. Um, uh, we talked about it briefly last week. It wasn't a part of Popo's Bizarre Adventures. Um, but we will be talking about it. Oh, Jesus Christ facts. Um, I'll put that on the screen. So anybody, if you want pause, Pause the VOD here and you can you can read the only facts fucking story there. Um, so here's here's the video. This happened. Do you need to be arrested right now? No, no, no. Let's just watch the video and remind ourselves. Come on. Come on. I'm going home. Are you finished? We don't play this game. You understand me? Oh. Who's my sergeant? Yeah. Yeah, give me your car so I can put a report. Six hours. Six hours they left her in that holding cell with no medical attention after severely fucking her arm up. She took approximately $14 worth uh, retail worth of goods from the supermarket. It was a can, a couple of cans of soda and laundry detergent. She, she is dementia ridden. She walked out of the store without even paying for it. She didn't even think about it. She walked in, she grabbed a couple of cans of Coke. She grabbed a bottle of fucking soap and she walked out retail value mo at most $14. No, yeah, latte. She she had no idea. She has full blown, you know, like dementia. She is medically diagnosed. Um, yeah. So at least we now know the ex uh, the ex piece of shit officer. Um, fucking what's his name? Hop, right? Um, his name is Hop. Uh, let me find his first name because Austin Hop, Austin Hop. And Daria Jalali um, responded to their call. That is the man and woman that you see in the officers' uniforms, in that uh, officers' costumes, in the in that video. Um, and so, yes, the the city will be paying three million dollars to the family, um, but there seems to be charges coming along the uh, coming down the pike as well for. Officer, uh, Officer Pop and Officer Jalali. Uh, Jalali seems to probably be getting lesser charges for sure, uh, for sure, but still charges nonetheless. 
Um, they, you know, as was stated in the video, they both were allowed to resign. They should have been fired since they were allowed to resign. That means they can be rehired somewhere else. Um, Jalali is facing failure to report excessive use of force, failure to intervene in the use of excessive force and official musk misconduct. Um, fucking douchebag McGee, on the other hand, um, he is, uh, now he has been sentenced f to five years in prison for, um, for assault. Uh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Hang on. I, I, There we go. Jesus. Um, so anyway, yes, he'll be doing five years. Um, looks like in probably gen pop. Um, he'll, yeah, I know, right? He'll be, he'll spring within a year. They'll give him some, some fucking, yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll get, um, you know, good behavior or some bullshit and they'll let him out within the fucking minute. Oh. Um Oh yeah, Alpha, 100%. Right, there's no such thing as a good is a good cop. Good cops get driven out of the force. Good cops whistleblow and report. Good cops get their lives and their wives' lives and their children's lives threatened because of that sort of thing. Um, th thank you, fact. Thank you. I, I think. I think. <laughs> thank you, fact. Some of those screen grabs, some of those shots they do for those thumbnails. Jesus Christ. What about game wardens? What about them? What about conservation officers? Is there, they're not called game wardens anymore, Glazy, by and large. They're called conservation officers. They don't conserve shit, but that's neither here nor there. Um, oh, my God, Rumble. This is like, I don't have time to do this right now in the middle of Popo's Bizarre Adventure, but Rumble, we've done this so many times. I'm surprised you haven't been here for one. Um... Somebody, somebody hook Rumble up with like, you know, fucking the standard fare for, well, what about the police? Um, Cedar, right? Cedar. Daniel Cedars. Now, I'm sorry, people of color. This story doesn't apply to you. Um, this story just isn't, this story isn't your story. Okay. Daniel Cedars, 65. His his estate was just awarded um, one point two million dollars because he was shot and killed by two Indianapolis uh, Metropolitan Police officers. Now, the only reason I say that this doesn't apply to you, people of color, right? Like this this isn't about you. Is because Daniel Cedars, sixty five, though he was killed by officers, straight up shot the fuck out of, at the officers when they rolled up. Right. They the officers were dispatched to an alleged incomplete 911 call near his residence. And so as they rolled up, apparently what happened was he shot like he he fucking went off like he he was like, holy shit, like there's people like they didn't roll up with lights. They didn't roll up like they just rolled up. Right. And this dude just starts lobbing rounds. So they start lobbing rounds back 
And so now you've got just gunfire happening, right? They're, they're literally just shooting into the residence at that point. Quote, outside the residence, shooting indiscriminately from a distance and position of safety with their ability to retreat. They didn't have their lights on. They didn't announce their presence. And when they rolled up, Cedars just straight up lit them up. The decision was found that the officer's use of deadly force was intentional and objectively unreasonable and violated Caesar's Caesar's constitutional rights. And the jurors agreed in favor, ruling in favor of Caesar's estate. As I said, people of color, this doesn't apply to you. (laughs) Cops roll up fucking unannounced and the white dude just lights them up. Granted, they got him. They killed him. They killed him. But it was found that they were on the hook for it. That, in fact, they were the ones guilty. (laughs) They infringed his constitutional rights. Uh... Let's see. Where am I being... Uh, oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah, like, yeah, of course. Because he's fucking, because he's white. All right. Let's look at another video that's probably going to irritate the fuck out of you people. Um, Copy that. And there we go. Okay. So... Um, I forget this dude's name. Um, you find him though. All right. So. Warren County Sheriff's Department. Oh, Warren County Sheriff's Department. What are you going to do? Warren County is in Virginia. For those of you who don't know, hey, Wither, we're talking about your neck of the woods. Warren County, Virginia. Now, this is a 77-year-old gentleman who has um, dementia. He will, um, during the course of this incident, what's going to happen is that he... um, He is going to, cops and dementia, yes. He's going to be driving slightly erratically, so the cops are going to attempt to pull him over. He pulls over in a well-lit, fairly um, well-lit convenience store parking lot, Um, and he is arrested um, because driving erratically, uh, fails to pull over, doesn't acknowledge commands, that sort of thing. Now... He is, according to uh, according to reports, uh, uh, record, uh, record, re- according to the reports as filed by the officers that were directly involved in the arrest. And you'll see why we say that for a second. He quote sustained two non life threatening injuries: a cut to the ring finger on his right hand and a cut above his right brow near his forehead. Jesus Christ, man, just grab a hold of him. What are you? Wait a minute. Wait for it. Help you! 
How many levels on you? Wait for it. Hey, get your eyes back. Pay attention. It's coming. That was fing unjust and fing unfucking called for. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's gonna be. At the end, the man saying that the incident was unjust was Corporal Lowry. Without him filming this incident and reporting the true event as it actually occurred, we would be left with the absolute lie that the sheriff's office released. Corporal Lowry is facing disciplinary measures. Corporal Lowry wrote in his report that when he arrived on scene, he observed an elderly man that appeared confused, opened the driver's side door with his arms down by his side, and that another deputy ran behind Mr. Ennis and placed his arms behind his back, facing jerking Mr. Measures. Ennis towards yes. the Ford F-150, slamming him into the camper face first, and observing Mr. Ennis spit something out on the pavement just below his body. He also wrote that another deputy came from the side of Mr. Ennis and grabbed him, while the other other deputy had his hands behind his back, that Mr. Ennis was pushed over, but his legs had caught the hitch of the back of the truck, and that two deputies and Mr. Ennis were on the ground at this point. But the lies that the sheriff's office released isn't the worst part. Mr. Ennis was transported to the Warren Memorial Hospital, where he began exhibiting signs of a cranial bleed and was taken by ambulance to another hospital. Mr. Ennis died 13 days later. The chief medical examiner is conducting an autopsy but has not released the cause of death and manner of death yet. <clears throat> so shout out to the soon not to be a police officer. Because he is. He's facing disciplinary measures. Um, so what happens every single good cop? Disciplinary charges, firing, harassment, murder. Yes, and they will harass him. Dude, for crossing the, the thin blue line, he will be harassed to the point of potential harm. Um, yeah. He will, he will be driven from the force, I assure you. Because states, he's going to be state's witness. He'll be state's witness. Not a gang, by the way. Not a gang. Yes. Um, oh. Yeah, no, that's, that's the argument. There's no such thing as a good cop because no good cops can survive. He'll be driven from the force. It's that simple. Um, so, Lafayette. Lafayette fucking uh, police department. The uh, Atchafalaya Basin. So we're in Louisiana, if you can't tell by the language. <laughs> Lafayette and Atchafalaya, right? Like, we're in, we're in Louisiana. Um <laughs> Open contain, dude. It was a week for drunk cops. It was a week for drunk cops. Like there was a lot of drunk cops last week. I don't know what the deal is, but apparently last week was a bit of a drinky week for cops in this country. Uh, multiple charges for crashing onto the Atchafalaya uh, Basin Bridge uh, while driving on Interstate uh, uh, Interstate Ten. Fucking, yeah, we're, again, that's in the headline list, non-binary. Like, it, fucking, um, Lieutenant Todd Alcorn, intoxicated, reckless operation of a vehicle, open alcohol container, first degree vehicular negligent, neg, uh, negligent injury, um, booked, <laughs> booked and released on a $9,500 bond, by the way, 25 year department veteran driving West on the I 10, uh, fucking 7 AM that morning, 7 AM. And he's hammered, right? Stuck on a braille, uh, uh, a braille on a rail bridge, right? He hits a fucking bridge rail and loses control of the car, apparently near mile marker 130, uh, 132, uh, Cassidy, a body if you want to go out. 
uh, five miles east of Whiskey Bay. Comes to a stop in the left lane after fucking basically like almost going off the bridge, right? He he fucking comes into the left lane and just stops and gets hit by a fucking oncoming vehicle because, well, traffic is oncoming. Alcorn critically injured, taken to Baton Rouge Hospital. Uh, the nine, the forty four year old uh, forty four year old driver of the other vehicle was taken to Lafayette Hospital. Um, here's, here's the real fun part. Alcorn, you know, the deputy, the guy who caused all of this trouble, the drunkard who got into his car at 7 a.m., hammered off his ass and fucking tried to dukes of hazard it up the side of a bridge or something. He's on medical leave. After the crash, the department spokesperson said, quote, We would like to request the public to keep Alcorn and his family in their prayers, and things are difficult right now, and out of respect for his family, we will not be releasing a statement. So, not a word about the victim in this incident, only thoughts and prayers for the fucking drunk cop. And at the same time, at the same fucking time, this motherfucker is out on medical leave. He's getting paid still by the taxpayers for being a drunk fuck who literally slams into oncoming traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 can I, can we get in on this, this gig? Cause this gig seems great. Oh, it seems great. Fucking dude, you just get away with anything. Just get away with anything. I dude, I'm reminded of the Las Vegas officer again, the caucasity, the fucking cop here in Vegas who said, I'm going to kill an N word one of these days and get a paid vacation. And what did he do? He killed an N word one day and got a paid vacation per his own girlfriend testifying against him. Yeah. Fucking I, dude, I've, I think of that guy from time to time when we do these, this fucking, there's a cop in Vegas here that his girlfriend testified against him. He used to go around saying, I'm going to kill an N word and get a paid vacation. What did he do? He killed a black veteran who was having a mental crisis, just sitting in a car in a par- apartment uh, complex parking lot. And they fucking lit that dude up. They fucking lit that dude up. That dude was on paid vacation for two years. And then he was allowed to uh, resign with pension. Yeah. He got a two-year paid vacation plus full pension when he resigned. Hi, right, Karina. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that guy fucking who was robbing casinos. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, not you no, know, he got to retire a lot early, Alpha. The guy was in his 30s or some shit. Like, he got to retire way ahead of fucking schedule. Way ahead of schedule. He got a free two-year paid vacation plus early retirement. Yeah. Yeah, it was was way beyond just, like, fucking retiring two years early. Like, we're talking, like, 20 years early or some shit like that. Yeah, it's fucking... Um... This is what the place looks like where he, oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So, yeah, I can I can sort of see it. I can see it. So this is where the, the drunkard fucking, so there's just two lanes opposing. And so he bounced off. So he bounces off one of these fucking rails. Like he, he pops his vehicle up off one of these. Loses, he like over here, loses control, swerves into oncoming left-hand traffic and fucking just nails a dude. All right. Car parkour, yeah. Fucking hardcore parkour. Um well, hang on. What was that? Um let's do that.
and satellite. That's the train track. There's the I-10. Holy shit, how would he have pulled this off, Cassidy? I'm looking at this with a satellite image now. How the fuck did this crazy fucker pull this shit off? Out here. Out here. Oh my god, if he plowed through this, I mean, it's doable. Jesus Christ. Dude, that's a hell of a fucking attempt. I know, right, tech support? Dude, I want I want like footage of that. That's some Dukes of Hazard fucking uh fucking family. Fucking shit. Like, yeah. Dude, that or I mean, he did some impressive shit. That or he did some impressive shit. I mean, this is the barrier that he could bounce off of. Like, if he's moving, like, I, dude, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. All right. I am where in my tap. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why did that do that up there? Whew. That was weird. That just. All right. Give me a sec. There we go. Weird. Weird. Uh, yeah, no. In fact, yes. Uh, Marsha Blackburn released a video statement. I don't know when this fucking article is from, but I don't know when they fucking, they need to update it. May 8th. Yeah, no. She released a video statement over the weekend um, openly criticizing the contraception ruling from 1965. Um, yeah. Like, that's constitutionally unsound rulings like Griswold v. Connecticut, Kilo v. City of, of New London, and NFIB versus Sibelius confuse Tennesseans and leave Congress wondering who gave the court permission to bypass our system of checks and balances. That is literally a denunciation of uh, the right to privacy vis-a-vis uh, -vis contraception pur purchases. So PolitiFact is wrong on that. Sorry. And there's, there's literally multiple articles talking about how in fucking all the way back to March, Marsha Blackburn has been denouncing Supreme Court rulings uh, that uh, supported the contraception from 1965. Um, yeah, you can go fuck yourself with that nonsense. <clears throat> You fucking people used to talk about how, oh, they wouldn't reverse Roe v. Wade either. The vast majority of people agree with Roe v. Wade. They wouldn't dare touch Roe v. Wade. Get the fuck out. They already are. I come from a generation that has seen genocide of gay people in this country. Yes, actual fucking genocide, right? I have seen the criminalization of uh, sexual activities uh, in my lifetime, right? No. Take, take your bullshit fucking quietest, oh, you're just being alarmist nonsense and go kick rocks with it. That's not what's going, oh, what's occurring. Now, let me go back to what we were already doing before I was interrupted by somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, anyway, <clears throat> Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, Minneapolis, uh, the police store, Wyatt Earth, thank you for the follow. Minneapolis cops are so offensive, all right? 
so offensive that prosecutors are openly talking about how they are unable to use any body cam footage in cases which involve Minneapolis uh, police officers. I have some interesting quotes. <clears throat> we struggle to use the body cam footage of Minneapolis police officers in court because cops say such offensive things in the video. This is according to their own internal investigation. The Minnesota Department of Human Rights, which published the findings, um, found that officers say disrespectful and offensive things to criminal suspects, bystanders, witnesses, and generally speaking, anybody in and around the area in which they are operating. Prosecutors in Minneapolis and Hennepin County have openly talked about how it makes it difficult to use body cam footage in court because, quote, it makes MPD officers much look much less professional and respectful than those in neighboring departments. When MPD officers scream obscenities at community members, it makes it challenging for prosecutors to do our job and therefore undermines the criminal justice system. This is a part of the result of a two-year investigation. It found that, quote, police consistently use racist, misogynistic, and homophobic language, selectively enforcing the law based on a suspect's race and violating human rights laws. They literally undermine their own prosecutorial uh, uh, efforts because none of what they say can be used because it will bias the jury against the state's case. Astral, oh, wait, wait you're, I see the, th the, the, the tongue on that one. Oh, God, is he actually talking about globalists? Oh, Jesus, good luck with that, guys. I'm just going to keep going with fucking Popo's Bizarre Adventures and ignore the idiots. Um, <clears throat> if it's that bad, I don't think you need to worry about the bias, this caboose. So, federal data. Federal data. I love federal data. I love federal data. Federal data is great. Um, I love a good federal data source. But here's what, it, uh, oh, uh, unprompted talking about the, oh, Jesus Christ. So, Illinois schools suspend and expel black students at disproportionate rates. Now, thankfully due to the federal data, we know it's happening with tickets and fines too. This is a result of a massive ProPublica um, investigation. Let's just take Bloom Trail High School in Chicago's South Suburbs. Fairly diverse. 60% of the 1,100 students are black or multiracial. 27 are Latino. Only 12% are white. But when you look at the group who gets ticketed for misbehavior at school, the, dis the diversity vanishes. Police, in cooperation with school officials, have written 178 tickets at the school in Steger since the start of the 2018-2019 school year. That only goes up into 2021. 167 of those 168 tickets, keep in mind, keep in mind, black or multiracial, 60%. 60% of the students are black or multiracial. 167 out of the 160 uh, out of the 178 93.8% of all citations written by police went to black or multiracial students. This pattern though isn't just that one school. It is a, it is part of a larger pattern. A full investigation of ProPublica and by the Chicago Tribune has found that it is a pattern of in schools across the entirety of the state. They didn't go anywhere beyond the state, but in the schools and districts examined, an analysis indicated that black students were twice as likely to be ticketed than their white peers. Keep in mind, we're talking about cops ticketing students in schools for things that we used to give detention for. Okay, So 
Chicago and Chicago Tribune and the uh, and ProPublica sent out reporters to analyze tickets in nearly 200 school districts all across Illinois. Together, enrolled. Oh my God, that is just the worst fucking link. Jesus, goddamn Christ, that's cancer. Anyway, for those of us on topic and not trying to do some weird anti-Semitic globalist rant in chat, um, 200 districts all across uh, throughout Illinois, which together enroll most of the high school students for the state. Now, the news organizations managed to obtain documentation of the race of students for 4,000 tickets issued in schools across 68 districts. After excluding places where ticketing was rare, schools in 42 districts remained, re representing more than one-fifth of the state's high school students. The analysis found that 9% of those students, right, we're analyzing 20% of the total uh, ticket uh, schools and ticketing uh, within the schools in the, uh, in the, in the state. 9% of those students were black. 20% of the tickets went to black students. It's that simple. The police, the prison industrial complex is using the school system to route disproportionately racist, poor, and otherwise marginalized groups into the prison industrial complex directly from the school system. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. They are using a typical childhood act of rebellion or disciplinary measure that should normally be handled between the parent and the teacher or the school and the parent and this sort of thing and transforming those into a direct, a direct pipeline from school to prison for the benefit of maintaining the status quo, for the benefit of the capitalist class, for the benefit of the oligarchical masters of which we serve. Uh, and by the way, they do it for money. They do it for money. That's it. At the end of the day, the cops are doing it for cash. They're doing it for their position. Hey, what's up, Papa John? They are. Black people are more or less uh, are less likely to get their childhood records expunged. Black, black people are what eight times more likely to receive a charge for cannabis. Um, than white people. I mean, we've covered the things that can get you shot and or killed and or maimed um, for being black. How many times now? Like we're just racking some up, right? Standing in a parking lot um, after having dinner, just having walked out from a restaurant with your friends. Um, fucking that dude was like 60 or some shit. Dude, they tackled him and fucking punched him in the face and shit. The guy who um, was just attempting to dr get some, uh, get a cup of tea, uh, a cup of iced tea out of his um, car in Baltimore, dude, they shot that dude multiple times, fucking paralyzed him, right? Driving, walking, breathing, trying to get an education, fucking, dude, the, the, the stuff that you will be criminalized and or attacked for physically in this nation for just being a person of color existing, all that list is insane. So, yes, just going to school in many instances, is uh, quite uh, <laughs> quite a quite a travail. Joey say, uh, tech support got to keep that legal slavery going in the deep south, baby. Yes, yes, we do. Oh, all right. So, how do we want to do this? In which order we want to do this? All right. So, while we're talking about malfeasances of cops, let's talk about Chicago history and the largest mass exoneration in all of Chicago history. Um. So, uh, Watts, um, let's see, Ronald Watts, we mentioned him 
in passing in one of the other um, Popo's Bizarre Adventures, Ronald Watts was a cop on the Chicago police force who had a, we- he was well known. He was, uh, he had a reputation for threatening, harassing, and framing predominantly black, black and brown people on Chicago's South Side. He is, I mean, he is sort of infamous apparently in certain circles and in certain um, like communities within the South Side. But he eventually got caught. He eventually got um, um, vi- like he eventually got caught planting evidence. Um, and so what has happened is this investigation into Ronald Watts's back cases has gone in, and what they have found is that essentially he was so dirty that 212 convictions, are being uh, 212 people who have been convicted are being exonerated as a result of this singular cop. This singular cop, we can point to 212 people that were illegally, unconstitutionally, maliciously framed and sent to jail as a result of one singular cop. Now, here's the kicker for me. You think the rest of the cops didn't know what Watts was up to? Do you really think that Watts managed to create, fabricate, plant evidence for, to the tune of decades <coughs> and no one else knew? Do you really think for a second that no one else was in on this because we know there were other people in on this there that he got caught um, taking a bribe um, or he took, he got caught stealing money from who he thought was a, uh, a criminal. It was an FBI informant. He, he and fellow officers were stealing money from who they thought was a criminal. This was back in 2012. And it turned out to be an FBI informant. Fucking, yeah. Oh, I guarantee he trained a few. I I guarantee he trained a few. Oh, so many times, public. How many times have we seen body cam footage of Popo plant and evidence? So many times. So many times. So... Yes, 212, by the way, that 212 number, those are just black people. I'm not kidding you. 212 black people have been framed. Like, yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, somebody ran the numbers. The city spent $9.2 million defending the officers in and around this. They can't. Like, you can't even begin to understand the extent of the systemic corruption that is surrounding a situation such as that. You can't. So, while we're talking about Chicago, um, Northwestern University <clears throat> published in uh, uh, PLOS 1 um, identified using a uh, machine lear- learning algorithm. They six, they identified 100, they actually over 100, it's 160. Um, they identified a, a, a just, just over 160 possible crews of police officers, gangs, gangs. <coughs> gangs there they off they identified 160 possible like criminal gangs or of organized cops within the Chicago Police Department using machine learning algorithms and Northwestern University and the researchers associated with this uh, and the Invisible Institute have published their uh, their findings showing exactly what they they did Um, and the data they're in fucking identifying misconduct committing officer crews in the Chicago police department. So if you want to read the study, by all means (coughs) have at the study. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it, all they did was focus on Chicago. Um, fucking the study identified not only like abusive officers, officers, but clusters whose interactions contribute to the emergence or diffusion of misconduct. So like literally it's, it's, it's network analysis. It's, it's machine learning based network analysis applied to police departments. And so it allows you to suss out a history and a pattern set that most humans probably couldn't identify. Statisticians, mathematicians would be good at this sort of thing, but it would take time. It would take effort. If they have the amount of data that they need, you can just run this through an algorithm and come out the other side and be like, that, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, right? So, yes, uh, a machine learning algorithm basically identified 160 possible gangs, like mini gangs or crews, right? That's my crew, right? 160 crews of criminal cops in the Chicago Police Department. So, you know, the same Chicago Police Department that we were just talking about with a police officer who was responsible for several hundred False arrests, planting evidence, fabrication of evidence, and false convictions. So if we've already figured out that one officer is possibly, we know of 212. So let's be generous and just say 300, right? We know of 212. Let's say he's responsible for potentially uh, 300, uh, um, 300 uh, um, um, illegal arrests, right? That hundred crews of 160, let's be, let's be conservative and say each crew only consists of three people. That's 480 people. Now we know that a single officer in, uh, who gets up to no good over the course of a career could probably do, uh, could probably illegally uh, help illegally convict and illegally arrest, let's say 300 people. That's 144,000 illegal arrests. So is that a number worth talking about? Is that representative of the, the few bad apples? Is that, is, that, is that not, oh, I don't know, a systemic problem? Even if we go super conservative, let's, let's, take, let's take some of those numbers and fucking shave them down. 480, we'll say three, three people in a crew, same thing. Um, and we'll say he was an outside performer. Ronald, uh, Ronald Watts was an outside performer. Let's say the average crooked cop only, uh, only fucks up, let's say over the course of their career, 50 people. That's still 24,000 people. Is that not a systemic problem? If you are illegally, knowingly illegally arresting people and, create, and causing civil rights violations... For 24,000 people. That to me seems like a systemic problem. So, I mean, we have millions of rape cases that have been problem. No way in hell cases are going to get redone. Impossible system maintained. Yep. So, you have somewhere between on the conservative side, 25,000. Somewhere on the, you know, moderate side, 144,000, and if you go full liberal with the numbers, <coughs> you can easily hit 500,000, right? If you expand the crews up to, say, five or six or seven people, and you pull the the uh, the, the average amount of uh, illegal arrests uh, up to, say, 65 or 75 over the course of a career and you start doing that, you start to end up in territories where you're like, oh shit, right? Like, uh, that's, you know, a lot. You could end up with a lot of numbers really quickly. What if 212 is the average, right? What if, what if 212 is your average number of cases that these fuckers rig? That's over 200,000 people. If like the groups start like, you know, is there, what's a crew account for five, six, seven, if it's six, that's like 203,000 people, right? Like that's, 
Is 200,000 citizens illegally arrested and their civil rights violated not a systemic issue? Is that representative of only a few bad apples when you have hundreds of thousands of your citizens being illegally arrested and um, fucking in their civil rights viola uh, violated? I don't know. Seems to me like it might be a problem, though. Oh. <sighs> Let's talk about Richard Whitehead, everyone. Richard Whitehead is, we've talked about Dave Grossman before. I've met Dave Grossman. Richard Whitehead, I haven't had the distinct displeasure of meeting. Um, Richard Whitehead is, it depends on who you speak to. If you go on social media, Richard Whitehead is uh, a patriot and a fighter and a warrior for the American right. He's, he's praised by various groups um, that would, well, be considered possibly extremist by some. He has openly called for the execution of government officials. He, see, he's, he has seen as disloyal to um, Donald Trump. <clears throat> In 2020, he uh, urged law enforcement officers to disobey COVID-19 uh, officials uh, 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 orders uh, from tyrannical governors, <clears throat> adding that we we're on the brink of a civil war at that time. <clears throat> Here's the problem. Mr. Whitehead, he's got a day job. He's a <clears throat> independent law enforcement trainer who trains police officers all across the United States. He is an Idaho-based law enforcement uh, law enforcement consultant who has taught hundreds of police officers and public safety workers uh, across the country um, <clears throat> in only the past four years. He's almost up into quadruple digits in four years. They're just police officers, 560. <clears throat> but he is, um, he is most assuredly uh, one of the more popular trainers in parts of the world. Now, Idaho is, thank you, Ray Apps, for the follow. He is most assuredly a, uh, <clears throat> he operates in the sort of Idaho, western, uh, western states. You know, the states that we are know are notorious for white nationalist or ethno-nationalist like um, cults and gangs and um, um, compounds, um, that sort of thing. Um, he has quite a training course from what I've uh, managed to see and scrape together. Um, Washington temporarily uh, um, banned him in 2015 because he was advertising um, <clears throat> courses on his website um, featuring instructional material that referred to turban-wearing uh, police officers, not even suspects. Um, if a Sikh, right, wearing a turban, he would refer to them as towel heads, of course, um, oftentimes misogynistic cartoons of women in bikinis. Um, his deception detection techniques <laughs> that he claims to have um, devised include, uh, no, no, this, uh, that would be Dave Grossman tech support. Um, Dave Grossman is the warrior training, um, the rise of the warrior officer, uh, a warrior cop. That's Dave Grossman. Um, he, uh, <laughs> part of his technique or one of the techniques that he trains um, officers in for his deception detection technique involves victims of sexual assault and claimants of, uh, claimants of sexual assault if they use the word we referring to themselves and an assailant in a statement, they are not to be trusted and their um, their statements therein should be con uh, considered deception uh, attempts at deception. So if they say something like, you know, I was in a bar <clears throat> and somebody sl was, I started to feel woozy and he took my arm and we went out to the uh, truck. 
that we, as far as Whitehead's indication of deception for detective purposes, is uh, credible evidence that the uh, individual who was sexually assaulted was uh, a willing participant who then uh, changed their mind partway through. Um, <clears throat> he, he, um, <laughs> he has a slide in one of his courses that, um, <clears throat> well, I'll just, I'll read it to you verbat verbatim. The suspect is a gender-fluid assigned male at birth wearing non-gender-specific clothing born Caucasian but identifies as a mountain panda. He has stated that the intent behind the inclusion of such content in his training courses is an attempt to push back. It is intended to push back against pressures on law enforcement to espouse left-wing ideological views on gender and race. <clears throat> He's one of five trainers that have been recently identified. Um, Reuters did some very excellent work on uh, digging up some dirt on these asshole trainers. He's one of five trainers that operate on a multi-state basis and train collectively thousands and thousands of police officers whose political commentary on their social media, um, shall we say, echoes some opinions um, that show ties to far-right figures. Um, there are 35 training firms that also align with this. <sighs> Here's a breakdown. The five trainers that Reuters look, looked into have aired views including the belief in vote-rigging conspiracy to unseat Trump. One trainer attended the January 6th rally. Uh, two of the trainers have falsely asserted that prominent Democrats, including Joe Biden, are pedophiles. Um, the, uh, they all espouse QAnon-related conspiracy theories. Four out of the five have endorsed or posted records of their past interactions with quote, far-right extremist figures, including prominent constitutional sheriff David Clark Jr. and Proud Boys leader Joe Biggs, who is currently being prosecuted for his involvement in the Capitol riots. Uh, he is, um, <clears throat> Whitehead is a member of the uh, constitutional sheriff philosophy that mandates that, 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 which espouses the position that county sheriffs should ignore any law they find unconstitutional. Um, and so he's essentially what would we would probably call a sovereign citizen of sheriffs, right? Like he's he's in that um, that sort of camp. Oh, so he's of course you know listed in the Oath Keeper database as well, uh, <laughs> amongst many other things. Oh, so here's what you need to know. Um, Oh, probably. Commodity. Probably. Grossman's gotten around for a lot of years. Grossman's gotten around for a lot of years. Um, <clears throat> here's what you need to know. Private trainers for police departments is essentially an unregulated industry. It sort of it sort of is. You can be placed on a training list for a local police department of like available trainers. If you can get your company placed on that list, you can be hired as a trainer. Now, what that takes for it to be put on that list depends from location to location. Sometimes it's as simple as a sheriff putting you on the list. Like, ah, he's a good old boy. I know Dave from back in the day. Put him on the list. Um, so it is most assuredly a um, shall we say, an area that has immense commercial opportunity um, and is largely unregulated, especially when 
comparing to other countries um, and other locales. Uh, so, yes, um, Hunter Biden, NRA, text with the Proud Boy leader, Instagram, fucking, I mean, moonlighting on January 6th, the political correctness stuff, of course. Um, yes. <clears throat> um, they got permission <clears throat> to attend one of his training classes, which I would never do. Uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't go to it. I would just never get permission to go if I were an investigative reporter. I would just simply purchase the class. I'd just make sure I can go. That's it. But it, even even knowing that there was a Reuters reporter in the room <clears throat> in Colleen, Texas, in Colleen, Texas, for those of you who know, know your fucking locations that you should know, Colleen, Texas, he referred to COVID-19, of course, as the China flu. He openly mocked transgendered people. He blasted, quote, blasted some states' efforts to end qualified immunity. Um, saying that if qualified immunity goes away, that takes away your ability to make a mistake and you will do jail time. <clears throat> and in an interview after the session, Whitehead said his class was about teaching officers bulletproof methods of documenting incidents on the job and not becoming susceptible to the winds of political correctness and appeasement. So, good old Richard Whitehead, Dick. He's the latest one. Dave Grossman, we've had to um, we've had to keep an eye on for many years now. Well, the newest one, the newest bad boy to join the group, y'all, is Richard Whitehead. Richard Whitehead, well, he likes to train police officers for money um, and uh, teach them some interesting stuff. Where is there is one anecdote? Um, there we go. Uh, Ozzy Kenovich is a sheriff in Spokane, <clears throat> in Spokane County, Washington. He's just across the state line from the Idaho County where Whitehead once ran for sheriff. Yes, he ran for sheriff, by the way. He fucking wanted, he wanted the power, but he was rebuffed. Now, <clears throat> during Whitehead's campaign, Ken uh, Kenovich, um, was highly, uh, uh, Spokane. Yeah, whatever. Uh, fucking he, um, Spokane, uh, Spokane, fuck them. Uh, Spokane. Uh, he, um, he was highly critical of, uh, Whitehead's ties to militias and the constitutional sheriff's movement during his entire campaign. Kenovich was contacted by Reuters because Whitehead had been hired by his by his own office to run 15 deputy training sessions. And Kenovich was shocked to say the least. He was like how wait what? He said yes, he's operating under a company name and clearly nobody has done the vetting on the company name. So this is Richard Whitehead who has been teaching the training classes for your deputies. Upon finding this out, he said, quote, I'll be having a conversation with my training unit. But even the guy who hated Whitehead didn't notice that this motherfucker had infiltrated his own force, his own sheriff's department. His own sheriff's department was being trained by the guy he was critical of, who he hated. Because of the absolute lack of oversight in commercial third-party police training units. So, yeah. Popo's Bizarre Adventure, everyone. Jesus fucking Christ. 353. We'll just, I don't know where we started, but. There we go. We don't like tankies. I'll tell you that right now. Um, 
Dixit inf- a Dixit infiltrated police training units and no one noticed. Jesus. <clears throat> Fucking Puka, I need a drink. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Uh, let me clear all this shit. Let me clear all this shit. There we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh, what am I looking at here? All right. Oh, well, that was a fucking segment. Leer, it leers, tears, laughs, and a lot of cringe and depression. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, that was uh, quite the quite the segment. They got Young Thug and Gunna on Rico chart. I don't even know what that fucking means, Papa John. <clears throat> I don't even know what the fuck that means. Um, holy shit, man! Popos went went a bit tonight, didn't it? I still love that San Jose shit. I still love that San Jose shit. Um, fucking middle of a goddamn kidnapping case for a three month old baby. A three month old baby goes missing. And the fucking two out of the fucking cops that are in the apartment. One's fucking hammered. Hammered, apparently. Like, hammered. Um, and the other one is fucking stroking his cock in the other room. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, get your shit together. And just literally a week before, they had a cop pocket some drugs and then end up dead of a fentanyl overdose because he did it. Like, Jesus, that San Jose shit is amazing. I haven't been following any of the uh, Archipelago stuff. I haven't been following any of the archipelago stuff, to be perfectly honest. I've seen some of the some of the pictures and stuff coming out of it, but I haven't. I legitimately have not followed a, a fucking drop of uh, the campaign. So, I'm pretty sure the the tanky already ran away. See, fentanyl's dangerous to cops. They don't know how to dose it. Uh, It looks like it's a landslide. They elected the son of a fucking dictator on a landslide. <clears throat> hey, um, Filipinos, are you, are you okay? How's it going? Are you, I mean, like, how are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, Viva, um, 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 Ferdinand Marcos was the, uh, what did he, constitutional authoritarianism? Yeah. Either way, yeah. Wait, did you actually meet him, Viva? I mean, I know you get around in some weird circles. Bong Bong, you met Bong Bong. Holy shit. Um, how secure is their election process? How secure is your piggy bank? I don't even think this one doesn't even feel like us song. I don't even think this is us. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. This is, this is bad for business in that part of the world, actually. Um, they need to focus more on making good food and less on electing dictators. Oy vey. Tee. Yeah, no, actually, this is this is bad for business.
So, yeah. But, yeah, the tanky ran away. Yeah, okay, just checked. Drive by tankying. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I still need to work out today. <clears throat> yes, cat. Oh, Filipino tanky. Marcos used social media to totally rewrite his family history, which is amazing. Yeah, I mean, fuck. There's a lot of people that have... <laughs> Thailand, are you doing okay? Is Thailand okay? Leader of feces eating cult arrested after 11 dead bodies discovered during a raid. God, they call him father, too. Oh, God. He would force his followers to drink his urine, eat his feces, and consume dirt in order to heal physical illnesses. Sure. Oh, God. Really? All right, so Thailand's got a bit of a cult problem. Got it. Got it. So they just rebranded it. Oh my god, they just rebranded a rape cult. It's fucking brilliant. Agama became whatever. Fangang Yoga. Oh, that's Fuck are you, Jesus Christ. Oh Last year, an elderly monk decapitated himself with a homemade device in an attempt to reincarnate as a higher being. Massively rich Buddhist sect. Another fucking cult. Yeah, that's, that's... Several tweets describe what happened as a failure of Thailand's educational system, notably in the area of hygiene. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <clears throat> notably. Yes, notably. People do be wildin' indeed, exactly. Harms of spiritualism exhibit, exhibit number 935. Who needs red wine and communion wafers, am I right? Yeah, I know, right? Jesus Christ. You thought the blood of Christ thing was weird. Thailand's educational system is super classist? No, really? I can't imagine what that looks like. Um, 
Let's see. Infrared's at it again. We're going to build a great land bridge from Alaska to Siberia, and we're going to make those satanic elites pay for it. In turn, bread tube, bread tube will learn the meaning of work as life's prime want. Can we just, you know, do the thing? These motherfuckers. We don't have time to deal with these idiots. We don't have time to deal with these fucking idiots. Wait, seriously? I'm seeing no confirmations of this whatsoever. I've seen no confirmations whatsoever. That would be big news. Yeah, I see no confirmations. So. Jesus fucking Harold tap dancing Christ. Those words were bad. Episodic mobility problems. Oh, throne is still empty. The throne will still be empty. Uh, yeah, you're you are right. It is looking like functionally. Um. <laughs> Schumer, as Schumer tees up to vote to uh, upvote to codify uh, Roe, progressives urge elimination of filibuster. Uh. Um, let's see. Seriously? Dude, that should have gone in fucking... Oh, man, that should have gone in Bad Movie Night. Oh, that was published a while ago. Okay, so we can talk about that. Uh, not Bad Movie. Jesus Christ. For Popo's Bizarre Adventures. But this happened a while ago, so there's no point in talking about it in this context. So we'll do it in this context. Um, This happened mid-last year? Yeah, this happened mid-last year. Uh, prosecutors in Maryland found that a sheriff's deputy and a Pennsylvania state trooper mistook a 15-year-old bystander for a 43-year-old at, um, attempted murder suspect they were chasing and fired shots into the, direct, the teen's direction eight times. And the incident found that the use of force was not objectively unreasonable. And the incident was the cop received no punishment. And the incident wasn't revealed for seven months and nothing has ever been done for uh, about it. Cool. 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 Um, uh, the same way that when searching for a like six foot something black a uh, police officer, former police officer in California, a bunch of cops shot up a truck with like a couple of small Asian women. One large black man, two small, uh, wait, Asian or Hispanic? I forget. Either way, two small brown ladies. Um, They shot up the vehicle with them in it because they thought it was him. If you don't understand, if you don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Christopher Garner. Um, yeah, it wasn't even the right kind of truck, Beast. Like, Beast is right. Like, it wasn't even the right kind of truck. It was just, it's just, how do they do it? By being fucking jacked up and stupid. That's, that's, that's basically it. Job. 
stitch this. This GMS, which is are too smart. In the so ridiculous, you didn't believe it until you looked it up yourself. There is case law at a federal level in the U.S. which explicitly allows police departments to reject applicants because they are too smart. In the yep. Um. Welcome to the fucking. Welcome to the party, boys. They shot Tamir Rice within 12 seconds of seeing him. One, uh, I don't even think it was, wait, was it 12? Like, I don't even think it was 12. Um, it was two seconds. Yeah, it wasn't even 12. It was two seconds. It was inside two seconds. Yeah. It was, it was just under two seconds, counted by frames. I don't care. Anyway. Yeah, point still stands. Either way, point still stands. Um <clears throat> I used to be a cop too, but I passed the literacy exam. Oh Seriously? Okay. That's a non issue. I hold on, hold on, I'm seeing a thing here. Apparently has apparently has is having a bit of a a down. He needs his his narcissism ego boost. So either way, um, there he is. There's pocket has. But there we go. He does need bets. He really does. But he doesn't believe in them. So he doesn't believe in psychotherapy. He doesn't believe in psychology. He doesn't believe in a whole bunch of shit. These guys, have, he's just fucking in the head. Um, so either way. All right, let's call it there. It's been a long run. And you get that trimmed. And I still need to do like a bunch of fucking workouts because I haven't done any today yet. Um, so what we're going to do, if I can get the thingy to do the thingy to do the thingy, because Twitch is just so fucking quick and works so well. There we go. We're doing this. I don't need that fucking suggestion. I'm already way ahead of that. Y'all, y'all need to, y'all need to fucking stop backseating me sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my request. Y'all need to. Oh, fucking A. I know what's up. I know what's up. Um, response. You, you Zippy, I wasn't actually talking to you about you. Caboose, I saw what was going to happen hours ago. Yeah. Um, everyone, 
Yeah. Another another week's Popo's Bizarre Adventures down. We're going to raid over to Karuno. Karuno's doing some art. Um, everybody be sure to follow Karina. Everybody be sure to fucking throw some love Karina's way. Um, I will be in voice chat afterwards for a little bit. Um, and we will go from there. So, I uh, Libra. Um, no worries. I got you, Libra. Um, yeah. Tomorrow, late night. Uh, we have more um, tier lists for tomorrow. We're going to be doing, um, like, uh, we might be doing American presidents tomorrow. Uh, Marcus sent me a new a new tier list. So, another, another catty gay tier list tomorrow. Enjoy yourselves. Take care. Much love.